Hello, welcome to the Nintendo Bros Podcast. I'm Pete. And I'm Derek. And we are two brothers, and we talk about video games, don't we? <laughs> I, I certainly hope so. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, so uh, if you're listening in right now, um, you're probably one of our two or three listeners, uh, but it's in a very exciting week. We one of just... our two or three first listeners. <laughs> yeah, one of our two or three first listeners, yep. But we just watched the Nintendo uh, Direct, uh, the September 23rd, 2022, September Direct. 2021, uh, but yeah. Sorry, <laughs> what year is it? Uh, 2021. <laughs> um, to start us off, uh, I actually didn't think this Direct was going to happen. I thought we were going to go until maybe next year without a Direct. Um, yeah, so, yeah. pretty surprising. I, I thought the same thing, but I, I feel like once... Uh, a lot of people start thinking that there's going to be a direct. It's almost it's almost a sure thing that there will be a direct. It's like people put their mind power into making it happen. Exactly. Um, but I mean, looking at everything they had, I mean, all all this stuff they it, it's weird because I mean, just kind of a vague thought here. Uh, it always surprises me how many things Nintendo or third parties f- for Switch like don't get announced until so close to release, right? Like, um, or the day of, the release. or the day of. Like, they, I mean, obviously the Castlevania Advance Collection leaked. But um, for them to not even, for them to not announce it until the moment it's ready to come out is, and it looks really good, we'll get to that later, uh, is pretty impressive, I think. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I think some of these things could have been shown at E3, maybe, if they were, and also we, I mean, it also felt a little bit like an unnecessary direct, in a way. Uh, A couple Twitter announcements probably could have done it. Yeah, I agree. I think some of this stuff could have been shown either earlier or... You know, not not in a main stage. Yeah, but uh, so I have a list of like you know everything they showed. We'll go through it. But uh, first off, Derek, what, what were your like overall thoughts? Like, how do you feel about it? J- are, having just watched it. Um, overall, I think there are a few things that got me really excited. Some things that not necessarily excited, but I enjoyed, and the rest is kind of fluff. So I, I mean, it's tough to say. I'd probably give it an eight point five. Okay, yeah, I'm I'm kind of in the same area, like a strong eight point five, um, because you know when when it comes from uh, when it comes to actual games coming out in their lineup, it was pretty impressive, uh, a lot of range and stuff. But I mean, nothing really no blew bombs me were dropped away. Today. Yeah, nothing really. Actually, the thing that blew me away, we'll get to later, is not that probably most people won't find it that exciting. That win back is probably the most exciting. Thing in the whole, <laughs> yeah, I, I thought that was awesome. Win back in uh, Seth Rogen as DK. <laughs> no, those are wins to me. Okay. No, I think Charlie Day as Luigi is even better. Yeah, that's true. That, that's pretty good. Um, but anyways, let, let's go through uh, one thing at a time. We'll get to our overall thoughts at the end. Um, actually, first question for you, Derek. Um, do you, you think this ask was, me a question? I'm gonna ask you another question. Uh, do you think this is the better than the <laughs> E3 direct? Ooh, I, I'd have to remember that. Uh, I'm gonna say this is not as good as the E3 direct. Okay, just cause, I mean but for close, me, close Metroid little... Dread at the E3 was pretty pretty big for me. So yeah, that's what I mean. I think I think that, and um, even though I'm not necessarily gonna get them, I thought Advance Wars and um, Super Mario Party being first shown, and um, well, I guess just those two really. I'm not a big fan of uh, WarioWare. I thought those two did better than most of the lineup today that was shown that was new. Yeah, it seemed like most of the new stuff today um, was was smaller scale releases, and the bigger stuff was either you know heavily rumored or leaked, or there are games that we're just getting updates on, like Triangle Strategy and Bayonetta three. Yeah. Um, but anyways, let's let's go through. So the first thing they showed off um, was Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak, um, which is a, I guess a big Monster Hunter Rise expansion is coming did, next year. Did you play Monster Hunter Rise? I played the demo, uh, and a lot of my friends have it. Yeah, because one of my close friends absolutely loved Monster Hunter Rise, so I'm sure he saw this and is super stoked. Now, I, I've got to say, I'm not a big Monster Hunter fan. I think we, you and I have talked about this before. Neither of us are really into the series. Mm-hmm. But I do have to say, from my short time playing Monster Hunter Try on the Wii and my short time playing Monster Hunter World on Game Pass... Uh, my demo time with Rise, I enjoyed the most. Like it had the most, seemed to be the most polished. Had the best controls. Um, over over world. Well, graphics no, but um, there's an openness to the to the uh, like the you can like climb up and scale mountains, and there's just an openness to the worlds in um, Rise that's really impressive. Okay, that's cool. Um, so I'm, I'm I'm glad it's doing so well, and um, I gotta say I was surprised that they announced an expansion like this before the PC release. Um, now the PC release is something that leaked, <laughs> like we don't, it's not actually announced yet, I don't think, 
Um, it might it might be like a definitive edition too. Yeah, or maybe that maybe the PC release is coming after Sunbreak. But it, it said at the end of the the Sunbreak trailer, it said major expansion. So it's going to have new stages, new new uh, monsters to fight. So it's I mean, if I was a Monster Hunter Rise fan, I'd be pretty stoked about this. Yeah, I agree. I mean, my only you have more experience in Monster Hunter than I do. The only time I've ever played Monster Hunter ever was I think I played Monster Hunter three for maybe like thirty minutes on. 3DS? Well, it was on 3DS, I, Wii U. It's been on a bunch. I think I played a console version with, like, Jeff Knight. Like, okay, it was on his... Wii. It was on Wii. Okay. But, um, yeah, so I didn't play very um, very much Monster Hunter in my life. It looks really cool. Just not really the game for me. But, uh, yeah, same as you. Um, I think people that are into Monster Hunter are going to love this. Yeah, totally. So, I mean, didn't, I'd be interested to know what your friend thought. But, um, yeah, I mean, not... It's one of those things where it's like, oh, good, this is a good announcement, but not really, it doesn't speak to me. Mm -hmm. uh, after that, they showed Mario Party Superstars. Um, they revealed all five maps. What, what do you think about this one? Um, you know, <laughs> I don't know if I, I'll, I'll get this day one, but I'm pretty tempted to get this sometime down the road. Um, I haven't played Mario Party in a long time, and, and I always had that itch that comes up once in a while. This one looks like a pretty well-made game. I don't know all those five maps and i also have faith kind of like uh mario golf and mario tennis where they add a few more uh maps as they go and even though they the, did they didn't add any uh, dlc for the last mario party though i know yeah I, I but this one almost makes it a little bit easier because they already have a whole group of maps all they have to do is just put them in the game yeah, I mean, but to be honest, that's why I'm surprised they don't have more than five maps. Me too, um, but I think maybe they were focusing on putting all the mini games in because they must have hundreds of mini games they had to bring over. I think I heard a hundred mini games. Oh, it's just a hundred? I thought it was like two hundred and fifty or something. Well, I mean, I, I mean, I don't know. A hundred's quite a bit considering you know WarioWare has two hundred micro games, and these are a hundred actual mini games with like four player competitive play and online. Yeah, so, you're right. It's a little bit different. I don't know it. I can't recall like what past Mario parties had, but I feel like this is kind of on par. Um, but at the very least, they're choosing from the old Mario parties, which means they're going to hopefully choose the best mini games. You know, there won't be like a bunch of trash throwaway games. Yeah, I mean, there might be some trash ones that are still lovable. But yeah, I, I think um, I, I, a big reason that I was hesitant on getting Mario parties in the later ones, not besides them not being very good is that I didn't have that online feature and I'm, you know, I'm kind of moving to the point where I don't have a lot of friends that I can just corral into playing this one night. Mm -hmm. um, but having the online feature in this game, it looks pretty good. It looks like it's going to be a good uh, a good time. Yeah, they kind of said there that like, you can play with your friends, you can play with your, uh, you know, line up with your friends and family, or they said something like frenemies, um, but they didn't really say you could play with strangers, like, explicitly, uh, and that's that's a big deal for me, like, Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Like I it's agree. a bit. If I can just turn it on and play a, a round by myself, or sorry, like by myself, but with online other people online, uh, that's that's that'd be great. But if I have to organize with people, I, I mean, that's a big. That's a maybe. You yeah, know? that's the same. To me, that's the same challenge as playing not online, like playing offline. Yeah, I mean, exactly. It's the, it's the it's not like getting together is the problem. It's the people wanting to play that's the problem. Well, I also wonder if there's the ability to have two players on one console playing online with two others. Like, could could I could you know me and Vanessa play with you and Sarah? Like, is that possible? Oh, that that would be really cool if there was. I think it might be because I believe Mario Golf and Mario Kart had that kind of two player online feature. But that, that seems more likely. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm, like, on the fence about this, too, but I am tempted. It looks good. The graphics actually look pretty, really good, too. Um, so I'm about I'm about ten times more likely to pick up this than the WarioWare or even Advance Wars at this point. Oh, wow, yeah. Um, I mean, Advance Wars to me is a lock, but this is maybe a, I'm an on-the-fence thing. It might be something, if it's on sale, I'll get it, but... You know, needless to say, uh, I think this is going to be probably the biggest seller this holiday on Switch outside of Pokemon. Yeah, I mean, there is the Black Horse Metroid, but you're right. I don't think Metroid's going to outdo Mario Party. I don't think so either. I mean, it's just got the family appeal. It's got the nostalgia appeal with this one. Uh, I mean, it's the only... Mul multiplayer, everything, yeah. Multiplayer, and it's got Mario in it, which is, I think it's the only real... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's the only new Mario game coming out this year, if I'm not mistaken. I, I, for the rest of the year. 
Mm -hmm. Uh, Okay, well, yeah. Um, So, I mean, I got to say, at this point in the direct, after these two reveals, I was pretty stoked. Because it was like, oh, you're getting the big ones out early. Lots of time for other big ones, (laughs) you know? (laughs) So... Uh, anyways, after that, they showed Disco Elysium, um, Final Cut. Do you have this? I know it's on PS4. Uh, I've PC. been humming and hawing about getting this for a long time. I I, I know how he- high it's rated and highly praised, so it, it has captured my interest many times, but every time I read something about it, it they say it's very text-heavy, and I'm not a, I don't really like a lot of text in my games. Me neither, um, yeah. Yeah, so I, I just don't know if it's... I, I think it's probably an amazing game. I just don't know if it's something I'd be able to get into enough to appreciate how amazing it is. Yeah, I mean, it, it did win uh, a lot of Game of the Year awards. I think... Was it 2019, I think? I think 2019, yeah. They've done a, they released it on different platforms last year, and I think this year they've had a definitive edition. Like, they've kind of... I know it's, it's a, I know it's out on PC and PlayStation, and I think this is its... I mean, it's been announced for Switch for, like, almost a year now. Um, but I mean, I guess it's finally coming out in, wow, like two weeks, three, mm-hmm. three weeks. Yeah. So it's another one. I'm de- probably not going to get it just because, yeah, same as you, it's text heavy, but yeah, I do, this would be a game. This would be a game I'd pick up if I had a long plane ride and I had no other games to play. For me, it'd be more like if I had to take a boat for like 40 days to get somewhere and then, then I might get it. <laughs> But uh, plane ride, I don't know. I have, 40, a, I have enough games. Forty day boat ride. No plane ride is long enough for me to read. <laughs> Forty day boat ride. Or I was stuck on an island. Okay, that's like the longest boat ride ever. Well, I don't know. Not if you're. Uh, well, I'm not. Let's not talk about boat rides. Um, okay. So, anyways, yeah, October twelfth. Yeah. Uh, I mean. St- Still, that'll be a big release in terms of like review scores and fans will love it. So uh, yeah, be, and I the people that love it, I'm sure they'll be happy to have it portable too. Yeah, um, yeah, that's another thing. Being portable is a huge factor for a game like this. Hopefully, the tech size is is appropriate. Um, after that, they showed off the Hyrule Warriors expansion. Um, I'm still not really sure what to make of this. Like the the cutscene didn't really explicitly show me what they're adding. Um, that's, like, that's exactly how I felt. I watched it and I was like, "What possibly did you add to it?" Like, I didn't know if those characters were returning or what they added I or mean, anything. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So I, I actually, I actually like pause framed um, at the end where they had a little checklist of things they added. So okay. It looks like some new missions. It looks like a, a new character, maybe two new characters that are like, it looks like they're paired together. Okay. Um, and there might be even another character. I, I can't remember what it said. Um, but and yeah, obviously so obviously new cutscenes, I think. New cut yes, scenes. new cutscenes. But it just was I was just surprised that it didn't like explain that in the trailer. Yeah, it's kind of amazing to me how I mean they could have easily just been like new characters, new missions, new story, yeah, exactly. new levels. Like how hard is that? I mean that that screen's not on long enough at the end. And I mean, it just seems really strange because what other release or, or sorry, what other trailer like throws up a screen of text like that for not enough time to read it? And expects you to get the information that way. Like it's, I, I mean, <laughs> it just seems like a really bad marketing for their no, for I, these expansions. Yeah, I agree. And I mean, it's funny because I remember with the first Tower Warriors, I bought every single piece of DLC for that on the Wii U. And and I remember when they announced DLC, it was like, oh, Link is on a horse now, and now you can play with Tingle. And I'm like, that would be really exciting. Um, but this one, I don't know. It's like a mix of. I, I really like Hyrule Warriors. Um, th- this new one. Sorry, it's called Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. Um, but for one, I, have, I never beat it. Like, it's such a huge game that I never got close to beating it. And I just feel kind of like none of these new characters really entice me that much. Like, it's it's all very small side characters from Breath of the Wild. Um, I think I'd be more excited if they were like, oh, like Xant is coming back and Tingle. And like, really started to like do Breath of the Wild versions of other classic zelda characters but i don't know if nintendo would allow that uh, <laughs> you know you know that classic zelda character zant <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty hey, it's classic to me okay um yeah I, I i'm the same as you like i played a good chunk of it but i never beat the game and i don't know if i'll ever go back to it my biggest problem i know people think it's over commented on but i find the frame rate honestly it, it really did ruin the experience for me oh, so yeah? i think I, I think i would go back to it if it uh, on a Switch Pro, if that ever comes out, I would love to play that again and kind of finish the game. But I just don't. It's 
I'm we're in an era now where there's 60 frame per game, frame per second games all over the place. I just don't need to play a game that stutters at 18. Yeah, I mean, I I, I still liked it. Like the frame rate didn't bother me that much. Um, uh, yeah, but, I mean, but, I still played a good chunk of it, but it just yeah. I I think the biggest problem for me was that um, the co-op frame rate. I mean, if you think 18 frames a second is bad, play it in co-op and like divide that frame rate in half. Uh, and it's it's like miserably low, uh, mm. headache inducing. So it's kind of not. I mean, I, I guess my problem with these types of games, these like Dynasty Warrior Musu games, is like the gameplay is just kind of shallow at the end of the day. And you know, I probably put thirty hours into Age of Calamity and didn't beat it. And I mean, how much more am I gonna play this thing, right? Like, yeah, I mean, people put hundreds of hours into these games, though. Yeah, I mean, maybe if I was 12 years old and I had all the time in the world, but I just, I kind of get to a point where once I'm like, once my brain has been fully, I, I kind of like feel like I've fully exercised all the gameplay possibilities and it's like, doesn't really entice me to keep going, you know? Yeah. And, and again, you, I, and I also have our own finances so we can buy a new game where a little kid would actually probably play the same game over and over. Yeah, totally. And I mean, I can see, I can see someone who's not, into the, like maybe they just love zelda and that's their biggest game franchise and they don't mind like hack and slash style like they're just so into the lore i, I can see why this would be enticing i guess my overall thought though is this this expansion has been like really poorly marketed in my opinion like it it is I, i've never been less excited about a zelda uh dlc in my life mm -hmm. no totally um but yeah I'm, it's like um, weird to hear this game still be talked about almost because it's it's kind of like it feels like it's coming gone you know it's like oh yeah, I, I, exactly. It didn't have as much of a impact as the first one, I don't think. Yeah. Um, just to, I, you missed a game that I want to talk about because I don't. I don't I'm, know I'm going in the oh, I voice, voice of cards. Voice of cards. Yeah, sorry, it's it's on my list here. Square Enix. Yeah. Yeah, I just I wanted to comment because I thought the game it looks really interesting. I again, I don't I want to see more of it and kind of see how it work plays out. But I think it's such a cool idea to have like even the map made out of cards. Mm -hmm. I think it looks I think it looks really cool and. Um, you know, Square Enix does make good RPG games, so yeah, I, I'm I'm curious to see more about it. And this one comes out soon, doesn't it? Uh, end of October. So, uh, and and like, is this a franchise already? Like, is this a PC indie release already? Like, I, I didn't know anything about this. I think it's a brand new game franchise. I think they might make the Voice of Cards franchise, and this is the first one, the Isle of Dragon Roars or whatever. Okay. Um, but I don't, at least from my memory and quick google search it doesn't look like this is a franchise okay i mean it, it looks interesting i'm not really into this type of game um but it does look interesting uh it seems like almost I, I don't i didn't get the impression that the map was made of cards but that you kind of like battled through the cards you know mm -hmm. um but who knows i didn't really get a big taste of what this was i think that something like this though would be more successful if it was tied to another franchise, like at first when I saw it, I actually thought it was like something Fire Emblem. I thought it was Bre I thought it was Breath of the Wild. Oh, what, really? Uh, oh, sorry, not sorry, not sorry, not Breath, Breath of, of Fire. Wild. Breath of Fire. Yeah, I mean, even something like throwing like throwing back to a classic franchise like that, I feel like would get more excitement um, because it's such a new gameplay style. Or I mean, card battles. How exciting is it? But if it's like your, I mean, people. But card card battles is a huge kind of genre right now that tons and tons of people are getting into yeah, like hearthstone right everyone loves it well that's more like a, a a true card game but i think like um i think darkest dungeon and maybe slay the spire like i don't again people are listening gonna say i said the wrong games but there are games that are like rpg card based games where like your actions and turns are based on cards hmm. so i think this is just taking it to the next level and i just did a quick search and it turns out that um the creators of the near franchise are okay. the ones that are making this game so there is a little bit of a you know, I, I know the near games are, are quite beloved, so this well, could yeah. have a quite not, a quite a not good. Not by game. you though, not by you. <laughs> <laughs> I like I like the first one or uh, Automata. Oh yeah, okay. I, I just you, didn't. Thought you I said didn't. It was a seven. I the problem for me is everyone raved about getting to the final ending, and I just I couldn't play the same game multiple times. Well, you almost play so many games that a seven for you is almost good. Where I don't play as many games, so like they're all eights. <laughs> You know, yeah, a seven yeah. is something I stopped playing. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's one of those things with card games. I, I for me, I just don't like being like uh, having so much text and so much like menu management. So if it does manage to do something and it's a good price, then maybe I will grab it. I don't know. I'm I'm just much more of like an action kind of game player. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, but yeah, thanks for thanks for reminding me of that. It, it is on my list. I just accidentally skipped it. Um, the next one's really exciting. It's uh, Chocopo GP. Uh, <laughs> Were you excited, excited about this? Because to me, I I thought this game looked like the worst of the whole direct. Oh really? Um, I'm gonna look at, just looking over the list here. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's. I mean I don't know. I'd probably take it over Disney's Magical World too. Um, but okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. it didn't look that great. No, it looked kind of like a throwaway game. Um, but you know, it's, it's, they must make money on these games and not, not cost too much to make. Um, but I don't know. It seemed like there was one point of this trailer where it seemed like they were just on the same level over and over again. Did you notice that? I'm like, this yeah, is, yeah, I actually thought it was only one track for a second. I honestly, this game almost struck me as a free to play game. Um, I but, thought it was going to be like a mobile game. It almost looks like a mobile game, but, and they just brought it to the Switch. That's what I thought it was. Yeah, and I mean, and they're, at one point they're like, oh, and you can drift. I'm like, well, you can drift in every racing game. Like, <laughs> yeah, is that, is that really a cart, feature? Every kart racing game or sim racing game. It's like every racing game has drift. But, you know, okay, there's two things that are kind of interesting about it. I think it comes out in the spring, um, but it's exclusive to Switch, they said. Okay. Um, and also it has a 64-player online racing um it's some sort of it's like not, it's a- asynchronous though but isn't it like you're in a you're in a race with eight eight people or something and then at, at the winner of that one will go on to race the winner of the next one isn't it kind of like that it's i think it's there's i'm just speculating there's probably eight groups of eight and then the top two move on and then there's gonna be two groups of eight or something or the top four move on and then you know what i mean you, yeah and you, you get you get yeah. ranked out of 64 basically well, right you get ra- well you don't get ranked out of 64 if you well, if you come in last, would you race all the other eight of last place racers? Do you know what I mean? Oh, I don't think so, no. Okay. Well, I mean, at least at least that concept is cool to me. You know, um, that concept alone is like, wow, I really want Mario Kart to have that. Like, I never even thought of that as a possibility. Like, it, it, it is a really cool idea um, to be I ranked. I, I don't think that, I think it's like, who cares? You don't think it'd be cool to race it in like Mario Kart and you come in second and then the next race you race all the second player races uh second place racers and and in two races you get ranked out of 64 people i think that's cool like just just to come in the top 10 out of 64 people would feel or first like and it's just two quick races i don't know it seems like a cool concept um it doesn't uh, it does nothing for me i just want to race i feel like a kart racer that's i mean all these kart racers are obviously chasing after mario kart because it's like you know it's the original and the best-selling kart racer I, I wouldn't be surprised if mario kart 8 deluxe has sold more than every other kart racer combined ever uh but <laughs> i mean maybe not but maybe um but i feel like if you're going to be a kart racer game you have to introduce something really new and i don't think like some final fantasy characters is really enough to get me excited like the gameplay doesn't look as sharp as mario kart or crash racing so I don't know. It's like they need to really have some sort of hook in there that's really, really interesting. And 64-player online racing almost, almost did it for me. Almost. I mean, it'd be cool if they were all on the same track at the same time, but it's not that. Yeah, that would be cool. Yeah. Um, but anyways, yeah, that, that probably was one of the lower-tier things in this direct for me, too. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't care about this at all. Not on my radar. I, I, was, I was trying to fast-forward. Yeah, through a live stream. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. I, honestly, um, so the next thing they showed was well, not really showed. It was the Smash announcement coming on October fifth. Um, as I predicted, they did not announce the final Smash Bros. character. Yeah, it's the Halo reveal or Master Chief. Well, I, well we can talk about what our predictions are after, <laughs> but um, I, I thought I, I mean this is what I thought. I di- I didn't think they were going to show the character. Now they definitely could have, but I think their feeling was that it would overshadow maybe some of the other announcements. Mm. Um, and I think I'm hoping, I mean, because on October 5th, they're going to reveal the character and then at the same time, Sakurai is going to show how, how to control them and how to play them. So I'm thinking it might come out very shortly after that as well. Oh like, yeah. I mean, usually, usually it's within the week after they show that. Yeah, totally. So, or I mean, even the day of maybe. So, um, yeah, it's kind of uh, interesting that they went this way. Like, I think if they had said nothing, then people would have been more, I don't know, anxious about it. And probably the question would have been, like, MIA, where's the Smash Bros. fighter? Because mm-hmm. it seems like every director major announcement has had something Smash Bros. for the last, I don't know, God, three years. Yeah. Um, so, But it's interesting that Koizuma said that, like, this is get He reaffirmed there's no third fighter pass, <laughs> which, you know, doesn't and this And he said, this is the last thing we're going to show for Smash Bros. Yeah. 
yeah. which is interesting. So I'm wondering. I mean, we've talked about this before, but I'm wondering if the if Sakurai will kind of be, you know, a little emotional during it, or kind of be, you know, offer some offer some final thoughts or something. You know, more yeah, than just I wonder like, how. Yeah, I wonder how the ending's gonna be. Like after he shows the character, like what's his final kind of few minute wrap up? Yeah, seriously. Um, I mean, it's it seems like there's so much pressure. I like I I feel like I feel the, the pressure and stress over who this character could be. <laughs> like I feel like no, I feel like it can't it can't win and and it, like I saw on uh, Reset Era somebody said like it's gonna be Hunter Biden. <laughs> That's the only person who could really surprise people anymore. <laughs> but um, I think the interesting thing too is that a lot of some people predicted, and this has almost never happened by the way that that Smash Bros. character would be announced, like, alongside a game release. So they would announce, like, you know, Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2 remix on Switch, and then we get Sora, or Halo's coming to Switch, and then we get Master Chief. For one, that's never actually happened. Um, it's never happened. Like, even when Dragon Quest um, Hero came, like, we had Dragon Quest Eleven as already announced. Um, so, and, and same with Fire Emblem. Like, Byleth was announced so much later than Fire Emblem Three Houses. So, it... I guess in my mind, this kind of does kind of show that we're not going to get that, like, game reveal with it. Like, it's not like Halo's going to come to Switch along with Master Chief. Do you know what I mean? Would, yeah, but it would be cool if they had a brand new, like, Nintendo first party IP that was like, this is the character from it. Imagine they're like, yeah, this is the, he's like, here's the character, like, no one knows who it is. And he's like, this game's not announced yet. He's, this is my next game, he says, imagine. Yeah, or he said, yeah, this this game is made by EAD Tokyo that's coming out in 2023. You know, I mean, like. I think that'd be a really terrible way to reveal a new game. <laughs> you know? No, yeah, but it just, it'd be cool. I, I'm curious, though. I mean, it's, I mean, I, I, at this point, I almost don't, I think it almost rules out Sora and rules out Master Chief. Um. I don't think it's going to be either of those two, seeing as we like have none of those games on Switch. Yeah, but you don't have to have a game on the Switch to have a character in Smash Bros. You're right, but I mean, having zero representation within Nintendo's world. I mean, I know Joker, but at least we have like some Persona on on 3DS, you know, and you know, Cloud. I get, yeah, I guess you're right. Um, there's been King, there's been Kingdom Hearts on Nintendo systems. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Um, I don't know. I mean, who, who do you think? It, who do you think it is? Like, it's like. I mean, who is it? Who do you think? I mean, there is a chance that it's Kingdom Hearts. We saw some Disney stuff today. Do, uh, do you think it's first? You are you sure sure that it's third party? Like, is that your guess? Oh, I mean, I could go either way. I, I honestly, my my gut weird feeling is that it's Emmy. Oh, from from uh, Metro Dread. Yeah, that's or, my that's or my, it's that's um, my... the Chozo. Yeah, exactly. I think I. I could see it being a Metroid character because it's, you know, this is right before Metroid comes out. And um, I really doubt that only because Metroid's not typically the most popular franchise. Especially I know, the but Emmy, I, which but is like they're pushing. I, all I'm saying is they're pushing this Metroid game pretty hard with, with promotions. So I wouldn't be surprised. And they had, and like, they're also pushing this Emmy character hard in this game. Well, in the you know, trailers, like this, the Amiibo, yeah. It's like everything, Emmy is like the character in, you know, it's like it's like Dark Samus. Like, it's the the antagonist of this game. So I wouldn't be surprised. But, you know, I, I would I think, love that. I, I just think it's not, I don't know, I, I get this, I guess I'm like maybe overthinking it, but I, I think it has to be more epic than that. You know? Yeah, I, I agree. But you also think, you know, Nintendo said, we want these, because Sakurai said he didn't pick these five, Nintendo did. Yeah, uh, and I can imagine Nintendo saying this will be the character because Metroid's coming out at this time, so it's got to be the fifth one. Yeah, and they did, like they brought an arms rep, a by Bi- Lith. like they are representing their newer games. So. And they can't, they couldn't have shown, they couldn't have released this character too much. Like, they, let's say it is Emmy, they couldn't have made Emmy the second character in this fighter pass because Metroid Dread wasn't shown by that at that point. Yeah, you're right. So um, there's a there's a good chance, but I also could see it being I, I could see it being a big third party character. I, I, my heart feels Sora, but my my brain and gut I feel Emmy. Now, so my my prediction is I I really think it's got to be a Nintendo first party character. Um, there's just no way around that to me at this point. Like it's like it's just for to leave this big franchise with like 20 million players, um, off with like a third party character that they might not know. Like it'd be really weird. Like if they brought like you know that that. God, who's the guy from the last fighter um from uh, tekken kazuya kazuya like that wouldn't go over well i don't think it'd be really a limp final announcement mm-hmm. so honestly like my guess at this point is it's either waluigi 
or it's again toad captain slash captain toad or paper mario maybe yeah totally um but I, but you can't use kazuya as a reference because that's a you know an older franchise that's not very popular this day and age i know it, and i know tekken's big but i'm just saying if it was sora that would be huge that's not like people i can see be def- sora being it too yeah as a third party yeah. if it was a third party it's it's i can say it's probably sora master chief one of those yeah um still exciting though i mean we're gonna know in about two weeks and it's exciting to know that we're gonna find out the smash bros character and then two days later play metroid oh yeah it's gonna be awesome right? um but yeah I'm, lo- I'm looking forward to that so the next thing that they showed uh was a you know long rumored 3d kirby game kirby and the forgotten land uh comes out spring 2022 um and you know what did you think about this um i don't play a lot of kirby games mm-hmm. so i'm I'm intrigued because I know how much you love Bowser's Fury, and I, I do like a lot of these kind of 3D platforming games. Mm-hmm. And it does look pretty good. Um, it doesn't look on the same level as Mario Odyssey. It looks a little barren at times, and it doesn't look as clean graphically. Yeah. Um, it does look kind of fun. It looks like there's some cool ideas going on there. And it looks like there's a lot of different areas to go to. You know, there's the the ice and the snow, and or sorry, the ice and the, the sand and the 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 town yeah and the beach and the so mall. it seems like there's there's a, yeah it seems like there's a significant amount to this game um so it's definitely in my radar i just want to see more because again I, i'm not a, i'm not a hardcore kirby guy so when i see this it interests me but i'm not like oh day one gotta have it right off the bat well the th- a thing that i couldn't really t- tell is like is this an open style 3d world or is it like linear stages you know i really couldn't tell like can you move the camera I, I I didn't really get a grasp on what the gameplay was. It actually looked early to me. Some like you're right, it looked barren and a little early. Um, so I just wasn't really sure what to make of it. Um, I I don't know. Like I I guess I was more excited for a 3D Kirby where I could kind of explore a big environment and fly around. And this looks a little more segmented, like almost like a Crash Bandicoot style of. Yeah, it lo- it looks like kind of like a 3D 3D world. Le- one, yeah, but a level at a time. Yeah. I do wonder. If, I don't know if it has multiplayer. I mean, th- this is the kind of thing that I mean. We're doing this direct, so or this podcast right after the direct. But it might there might be more information like leaking out on the website and stuff. It might be a multiplayer game. Mm-hmm. I don't think it will be, but um, I don't know. It's hard to tell with this one. It, it looks like on one hand, like kind of boring to me, um, but it also on another hand, it almost looks really interesting because it's like Kirby looking at a post-apocalyptic city and giant gorilla bosses and and you know with the ability to him suck up any enemy the possibilities are kind of endless right Mm -hmm. but it didn't really have that triple a sheen that other games like odyssey or splatoon do so i was a little bit like okay it feels almost just like another it feels less exciting than i wanted it to be but it's still a new kirby i agree it's the exact same sentiments it's yeah, like, it's, it's, yeah, it's like, I, I'm a little bit more excited for this than I would be, like, a, a, a Nether 2D Kirby. Oh, yeah, I agree. And, and you know, I, I have faith in, with Nintendo and... I guess it would be party. Hal, Hal but, Labs would probably be the ones making it. Yeah, but I just mean, you know, it's still a Nintendo IP. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I have faith that it could be really good. But I, I, again, I'm not a huge Kirby fan like some people, so I, I'm still reserving my judgment. Yeah, I mean, I, I also wonder if this will be a breakout hit for Kirby. Um, you know, and, and 3D games typically do better than 2D games. Uh, and, I mean, not always, but t- but typically, especially in North America. Um, so will this be the game that, like, gets Kirby out of that kind of similar sales? Like, I mean, usually I think Kirby games sell around 1 to 2 million. Is this going to be the yeah, game and, that and the, and that's it sell 10 million? Like, I, I don't it know. It also has the, the Switch factor, right? You know, this is the first kirby game on the switch like at least a, a new full-fledged yeah. kirby game no star yeah. Al- star allies was a brand new game i thought that game was only kind of a multiplayer smaller game Remain. no so that that's a full-on like 2d kirby adventure game but it's just more it's, it's multiplayer you're right but it's just more generic than some of the 3ds kirby games like triple deluxe and Pro- project robobot okay like those had like really unique ideas they used a 3d background foreground like had really i actually i i only played triple deluxe and it's amazing like i it's the, my favorite kirby game uh my understanding was that um star allies was just kind of a mediocre kirby game but hmm. 
I d I'm, don't quote me on this, but I think it's the best-selling Kirby game ever is the Switch one at like 3 million or something. So I think you're right. I think this could be maybe the best-selling Kirby game ever, perhaps. Hmm. Um, but who knows? Like, this is one of those games that could come out and get rave reviews and, I'm, and then I'm, I'm a day one. Or it's something that same exactly gets a 78 on metacritic and i'm like oh i'll probably pass and it, honestly like it could go either way i could see this being as good as like a mario odyssey or i could also see this being you know in the mario tennis mario golf kind of zone like of, of reviews you mean uh not just reviews but also like feeling feeling like it's missing things that it should have or barren or, or like just uh, like underbaked yeah True. I mean, it did I, from the trailer. It does. It doesn't look like the game's gonna be bad. You know what no, I mean? No. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, at the very least, it'll just be like a game. What you'd expect Kirby in three D. But um, another thing that I kind of noticed is that it didn't show. Like the big thing I look for in three D platformers is like movement and play, player agency and movement and game like fluid game controls. Uh, I mean, just looking at the o early Odyssey trailers, and you're like, oh man, like look at how this moveset and how fluidly Mario can move. I didn't get that sense from this trailer at all. Like, Kirby mm -hmm. looks like he's slow. When he was flying over the water at that one part, it looked like he was like hitting an invisible ceiling, invisible wall in the ceiling. Uh, and I just didn't get the sense of like, oh, I can like finally run and roll and jump off a cliff and, and fly like Kirby. I didn't get that kind of but feeling that i like from 3d platformers the one thing to remember though is that kirby is not that kind of platformer ever it is not a fluid fast platformer ever it's like a kind of a slow walk and a little bit of a you know a puff fly and then sucking <laughs> up enemy i just i'm you know what i mean it's not like you're whipping through and rolling and double jumping it's like it is a slower platformer and always has been i don't expect this to get this to be a mario or a sonic it's not gonna have that speed I mean, if anything, there'll be a part where you, you know, you suck up the wheel enemy and you have a little segment where you're like rushing on exactly. the wheel and it's like a very segmented spot. But um, yeah. I also would hope that a game like this has difficulty because, you know, like we both said, there doesn't look like there was a ton of enemies. And I would love a Kirby game that was just much more difficult, <laughs> even if it's slower. It's like you, you walk into an arena and it's like you could die and you have to yeah. <laughs> like really be But strategic. again, Kirby's rarely difficult, always. Like, I don't think again, it's ever just... been difficult. There's been a few uh, probably end levels that I died a few times on. I would say this is more akin to um, Yoshi's Crafted World. Okay, even though that to me looked really great, I never. I, no, I, I, never, I don't mean. I, I don't mean it. look. I don't mean it's looking great. I mean as far as Challenge. difficulty. Yeah. yeah, I mean it'll probably be based more on exploration and like finding hidden things around the world than it is. Yeah. but I don't think it's. I don't think it's. Op action. I don't think it's open world. No, I, from what I gathered, I don't think so either. Uh, I looked like it's either. Like I'm, either I'm looking you have at, a I don't hub. know if you have, like I don't know if you have the video open, but I'm looking at some of the video, and you know when he's running up the side of a building, uh, like you can't just jump off the side and be in the city again. Like you know you're on a track in that. Yeah, I could tell that, and it looks like yeah. the camera's fixed. Um, it looks like the kind of thing where you might walk into like a hub center. Which mm -hmm. might be that mall, which might be that city, which could be could be anything. It could be like a little like Mario Odyssey, like you're in a little Kirby ship and you just choose the next world to go to. It could be a level select screen, um, or it could just be a straight up level after level after level after level. Yeah. Um, my hope would be that it would be maybe not the the may, either the hub system where it's more like exploration based and you're. I know at one point you you saw Kirby collect something, so I wasn't sure if it was even like a collection based platformer. But, I mean, that'd be cool if it's like, you had to collect a number of, I don't know, stars to, like, unlock new levels and, and be a little more open than, like, this typical Kirby, like, level after level after level, and then when you beat it, you're done. I would mm -hmm. rather something a little more exciting. Like, e even if it was level after level and had, like, a world map, if there was, like, split pathways and stuff, or secret pathways, like, I'd be really into that. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if I consider this a triple A release, but, I mean kind of is like I, I what i saw on uh just some impressions people seem to be loving what they see oh okay i i'm i'm surprised again i don't think it looks bad but this is the game that i'm more excited for advanced wars than this and i know you you're excited for advanced wars but um this game like it's a first party game so it's worth being excited for a little bit it just doesn't blow me away yeah um but i mean i think by the time it comes out in the spring and I'm guessing by spring this means like May or June, probably yeah, closer to yeah. June. Uh, I think that they're gonna have a lot of time to polish it up and get it good. I I think it'll release in a good state. Like 
usually they have a Kirby game every year and they've had no Kirby game this year. So that to me kind of shows they're putting a little more effort into this one. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is, no, this yeah, is a big, sure. it's like, you know, it's a big deal to bring a two, a typically 2d series into like a big 3d space. Um, yeah, I guess I just had dreams from Kirby air ride and like zooming across the city on a star and like having choices of where to go. And, but it's not that. Um, but anyways, um, Good, good announcement. The next one was a Animal Crossing Direct is going to come in October to announce more stuff for that. Um, okay. I mean, I think it's nice they... I think it's nice they didn't, like, drag this Direct down with, like, okay, now we're going to spend eight minutes talking about updates to Animal Crossing. You know, like... Agreed. It, it was a good pacing of the show, and I think it was smart of them to say, no, we're going to have... For Animal Crossing fans, we have a specific Direct for that coming up. It's funny, the one thing I, that I thought was um, too much, as far as pacing goes, was Splatoon 3, which we'll get to. I just thought it was it was too much there. Okay, well, we'll get to that near the end. We're kind of going in order. But um, yeah. I don't agree. But anyways, <laughs> <laughs> with uh, the Animal Crossing one, like I got no information from that little clip. <laughs> like I, I got nothing. I, it was kind of, almost, I almost laughed because it was like, oh, well, Animal said, Crossing. Yeah, I mean, they said there's a big November update and they'll talk about it in October. Yeah, so I hope that's what fans want. You know, I hope the quality of life improvements come and stuff. I don't think it's going to... We can do a we can do a podcast for that director or around that director and t- talk about it. I, I guess. I mean, we're not the big... I do have Animal Crossing, but I, I doubt any update's going to really pull me back in. No, yeah. I just um, mean we can, we can mention it. Yeah, we'll talk about it. We'll def- Well, we talk about everything, so... Uh, the next announcement, <laughs> literally everything. The next announcement was Mario Golf updates. Uh, I thought this was pretty good. They have Koopa and Ninji coming to it as characters, which is whatever. But uh, I thought the the thing that struck me was that it's two new courses and it comes today. Um, so that brings the course total to like I think seven or eight. So it's like much much better than when it initially released. Yeah, I think I think it's eight now. Uh, yeah, and and before they uh, the last update added like a ranked online um, play, so I don't know. It's like it is they actually are significantly improving this game from my my problems with what like my what what seemed to be problems when I saw the previews and reviews. It seems like they really are fixing it by adding a ton of new content. So yeah, I think I'm I'm the longer this game goes on, the more likely I am to buy it. Like I wouldn't mind picking this up ga- this game up, you know, used at $45 in a year and a half or two years. Yeah, that's kind of how I'm at. I mean, I, I'm probably look for a sale as well. Like, But I don't know. I'm also someone who kind of falls into the hype. Like, if this game launched with all these courses and characters and ranked play and everything, I, I get more, like, swept up by the release hype of something than, mm-hmm. like, two years later. It's like, oh, yeah, we can play Mario Golf. like, Or we can play Metroid Prime 4. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. On Switch Pro. Yeah. Good you point, know? good point. Um, so I don't know. We'll see, but it, I, I'm glad that it's getting updates. And I always love when they say, "Hey, new things coming right now," especially with courses. Like, it, you know, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Uh, after that was Disney's Magical World Two. I know you're excited for this. Did you pre-order? Day one, day one. You yeah. Okay, this is a 3DS um, remaster, if you will, kind of in the vein of Metopia. And I, I, as far as I know, these games are pretty popular in Japan. I mean, for their budget. Um, and I, to me, this is another kind of like Metopia style release. I could see this being huge. You know, like think of how many people have a Switch and all the kids that have a Switch. I'm sure they'll love this. I don't think it'll be huge because I mean, this game is already. I don't com- think it will already, be huge. It's already come said, out on I 3DS. Think it, I think it could be huge. Maybe, but you got to remember, it's already been on 3DS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't think Switch Factor is going to, like, make this game blow up. I mean, it's still a, a game that came out years ago. And, you know, maybe if it was uh, Disney's Magical World 3 exclusive for Switch. Uh, but I don't know. It, it it looks like the uh, Nintendo made a decision, like, I don't know, a year or so ago to really follow up with this um, me line they have. So they're, they got Metopia, they're doing this. I wouldn't be surprised if um, Tamadachi Life comes eventually as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're probably pretty easy to port. I think they're getting, you know, who knows who's who's doing the remaster, the remasters on Switch, but it'll, probably a low budget release that makes enough people happy. Um, we got to remember that these systems are also made for young young kids as well. <laughs> it's not yeah. just for adults. Yeah, not, not just for adults. <laughs> um, so yeah. Anyways, uh, the next thing actually is one of my highlights from the whole show, and that's Knights of the Old Republic coming to Switch on November 11th. And the funny thing to me is, is like, I was kind of leaning on getting, you know, Shin Megami Tensei V on November 11th. 
I might not do that anymore because I want to get Knights of the Old Republic. And it's just funny because uh, I saw a tweet being like, hey, get ready for Knights of the Old Republic remake on PS5 by playing it on Switch. Like, I, I'm pretty sure this is only coming to Switch for now. Hmm. Um, it's but, probably because they're not able to get the, the remake. Well, yeah, I, I don't, I, you never know. I feel like the strategy with some of these, like, indie games and, and smaller releases is to go on Switch first. Like, as far as sales go. Like, it worked out really well for Hades, right? Yeah. So maybe that's just their strategy. I mean, I can't fathom this game not coming to Xbox and PS5, or because for obvious the remake, reasons the remake is. But why? I, I mean, I'm not sure they want to bring this. I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. I mean, it's the kind of thing that, like they could press a button and have it on PS5 and Xbox like tomorrow. So I know, but they they just announced the remake. But it's not going to come out for at least at least two or three years. Yeah, true. I, if not four or five years, given how track records are going as generations go on like it could be five or six five or six years until nice the remake comes right yeah, so yeah i mean i can see them just putting it over i mean and also all the other star wars games i've gotten a number of them jedi outcast and um uh pod racer like they've all come to every console um but i gotta say like this looks awesome to me like i played it back on xbox originally and it was one of those like big it was like after halo and halo 2 and ninja gaiden this was the big xbox game Hmm. Uh, that was only on Xbox and PC. Like PS2 didn't get it, GameCube didn't get it, and it's it's got a really great story, really get great combat system. Um, it's it's a good one. Um, See, so it, yeah, it's it's funny for me because like I didn't even know this game was a game until maybe two or three years ago. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, like it just it, I'm not a huge Star Wars gamer, um, and I knew I like I knew about this game a couple of years ago that it was super popular and like you know considered one of the best star wars games ever made um so when i saw the remake um in that i think it was the playstation showcase that was really cool mm -hmm. and this looks really like i would i'm tempted to get this on the switch too um i was actually leaning towards not getting it because waiting you know i i wanted to wait for the remake but you make it a, a good point that you know that could be four years away so maybe I will pick this up. I mean, it's also the kind of thing with a with a game like this. You pay fifteen dollars for it on Switch. You play a third of it. You put it down. Never play it again. And then you're kind of primed for the remake. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, like I don't I don't feel pressure to beat games anymore. Um, but is I, I will. Is it a turn based strategy game? Like, uh, or, it's it's uh, like a turn based. No, it's, it's like a real time. Uh, okay. Uh, like it's like an action RPG. Okay. Okay. But it's just really cool. It's got a really cool story and and. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm I, 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 as a handheld, like I had that kind of R itch for an RPG this year, and this looks like it's the one I'm gonna get on Switch. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's, I, that was a really cool announcement, and I just want to say as a side, like I think it's really cool how all these older Star Wars games are getting these re-releases. Like these games have been locked forever, like you know Jedi Outcast and Pod Racer. Like the, th the thought that I can play those on Switch is awesome. Uh, I just need Shadows of the Empire. Yeah. Which might happen, and we'll get to that yeah, later. Yeah, in our I, was about, I was just about to say that. Uh, we're about halfway through the list here. Okay, there's a bunch of uh, throwaways here, though. Uh, Dying Light Two Cloud is yeah, coming. I, Cloud Edition is coming to Switch. I played the first one. I'm gonna get the second one on PlayStation Five. So. And it comes out this year on PlayStation Five or next year. It was supposed to come out in December, but it just got delayed. I think like last week to February fourth. I want to say maybe February eighth. Uh, is, yeah. is this? Does this gonna have crossplay with Xbox? I'm not sure about crossplay in that sense. No. Okay. Cause I, it, I don't know. It seems like um, it's basically like a it's like four player online open world yeah. zombie yep. survival. Yep. It's that, it, I played the first one and I, with a friend and it's it is really 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 fun. Cool. I mean, I, I this is something I probably wouldn't get on Switch. I'm not too into the cloud games. Um, although I gotta say I played the demo for uh, Control on Switch. <laughs> like that's the only version of, of Control I played, <laughs> the cloud version, and it ran really well. It almost felt that's the only seamless. version of Control you've played. Yeah. Oh my god. And I have it on. I even have it on Game Pass downloaded. So you should, you should play it. It's I know. I want to. I just. It's just. I'm just talking about the. You know, as far as the cloud no, like latency yeah. goes, it's 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 like blurry because you're getting a signal like an online signal and maybe there's latency, but it, it performs fine and and like it's interesting. I played on the handheld, so it was just really cool to see Control on a handheld, and it like look looking way better than anything I'd seen on switch because it's because it's stream basically streaming it mm -hmm. uh, my only fear about these types of games cloud games is that a 
if you're ever not within a Wi-Fi zone, it's like basically play. unplayable. And are these cloud servers ever going to shut down? So are you essentially paying for a, like you're paying to stream a game that one day you won't be able to play? I, I don't know. Something about that I don't love. Yeah. But um, I also thought it was weird. They announced Dying Light 2 on Switch coming on February 4th. And then they are like, oh, and if you want to catch up on it, play the first one coming even sooner. It's just a weird way to announce it. Um, <laughs> is it? I, I, mean... I don't know. Is Dying Light Platinum Edition, is that just the first one with like some DLC? It's the first one. There, was, there were like three or... I think there were like two or three big DLC. And then there was a bunch of side, like extra stuff added too. There's a lot of content added that I never played on the, on the original. So okay, yeah. It's under like it it's understandable that there it's the platinum edition or whatever like it makes sense cuz there's a there is a lot of stuff added. But I, I did think it was interesting that um Dying Light 1 they didn't specifically say it was cloud. So is is only Dying Light 2 cloud? I think Dying Light 1 is not cloud, but I think it's very very low res like a lot of pop it up probably a yeah, lot of in 30 frames. Not as, exactly, not did, as much did, there. Did um, Dying Light uh the first one was it a PS4 three game right it might have been a crossover but i, I played it on the ps4 okay I, I, it's yeah. a little bit older though it's not like a p it's not like a late ps4 game it's it's a it's like a late ps3 game isn't it or oh, I, no, I, think, I think it's i might be mixing up with dead island which was dying a PS3 game. dying light did come out on ps3 you're right okay um I am just looking up the Dying Light release. Th that's usually like my barometer for like can Switch handle it is was it on Xbox 360 or Switch? So Dying Light came out in uh, January 2015. Oh, so PS4. PS4, yeah, it was it, it came out when I had a PS4. Okay, so it wasn't really on PS3, Xbox 360, was it? But there is a at least on Amazon a Dying Light PS3 game. Oh, weird. It's weird that a PS3 game came out 2 years after the PS4 came out. That's yeah, weird. maybe maybe because they already already promoted it as a PS3 game, and then that's weird. Yeah, I'm not I'm not uh, sure. Um, but anyways, it's the Nintendo podcast, so who cares? Um, but <laughs> I think it's I think that as a side note, I think it's good that these types of third parties, like Western third parties, are supporting Switch like this, especially when they have to go through the trouble of setting up a cloud server and downrezzing the game. It, it bodes well for like Nintendo's third party Western support, which traditionally they just didn't have. Mm -hmm. so i mean it, it bodes well for like inevitable switch pro switch 2 for like us to continue to get these types of games just as confirmation uh it did not come out on ps3 okay cool uh i'm, I'm, I'm not like on my computer the same way you are so it's good that you're looking these things up mm -hmm. um, but I, I can imagine you know let's say you're you know stuck at the cottage with your three friends and you're like hey let's all get dying light on switch so we can play together and then your wi-fi yeah, at this it, at the wi-fi in the cottage doesn't work and then you can't play it <laughs> I mean, I, I wouldn't trust to play Dying Light uh, on a Switch multiplayer, anyways, because I think it would just be terrible. Um, Dying Light is a great game, but I I just don't think Switch is the right. It's a, it's like a huge open world game. Like I think it's gonna be janky and bad. Yeah. On on the Switch. Okay. Well, I mean, I I don't think anyone's uh you know getting super excited about this release on Switch right now. Uh, but it's just it's it's one of those things that yeah, it's there. You know, <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's um, move on because we yeah. spent like six minutes. Six minutes talking about this. Well, game I want to talk more about actually Dying Light. Uh, <laughs> this is the Dying Light podcast. <laughs> okay, so after this, they showed off uh, Project Triangle Strategy, which is now just called Triangle Strategy. Which yeah, was... I hate the I hate the name change. Really, you think it should be called Project Triangle Strategy? <laughs> just kidding. Okay, okay. So most people, I think, like this change, and I, I think most people predicted they just dropped the project from it. Mm -hmm. I um, like it. I, I gotta say, like, this to me, uh, I mean, okay, even though I won't buy it, and it's not my type of game, to me this is, in a way, like, the best game from the entire Direct. <laughs> this, looks, oh, this was, this was my number one game. Yeah, it, it, it I'm looks, day one, day it one. looks really, really good, and to me it looks like it's doing a lot of things that Octopath Traveler, like, didn't do. And they they came out and said all the survey stuff that they fixed, and people, I was reading about on the forums, like, uh, people were like, this is exactly the things that I wanted to have fixed. So, and I mean, I, I, I love like the, the camera can move now is one of the things mm -hmm. I saw and it comes out in March, like a solid March release date. Did you play the demo? I downloaded it and played it for like 12 seconds, but then I just got, I got busy. Okay. So I did not actually play it. And now but I'm just going to get it. Day one. I, I love, I love tactical strategy RPG games like this. I loved Octopath Traveler. I am all about this game in every single way. Yeah. And I, I remember they, they showed it in the trailer, just a little bit of battling. 
and someone like summoned something and it just it looked really really cool like a really good mix of that um snes like really great um sprite animation with like mm -hmm. three, 3d sensibilities um yeah like it's weird like i'm not that interested in this game like on a personal level but i recognize that this is basically like another triple a game and it looks it look I, my impression was that octopath traveler was a great game but didn't like go all the way to being like a nine or a ten for most people yeah there's some thing there's some areas that fell short and for sure and i i guess my hope is that this will be that like quintessential amazing classic S, like uh snes inspired modern rpg like it will yeah. do what i hoped octopath would have done for people i agree i have like full you. faith in this game yeah and, I, and i'm someone that loved octopath traveler yeah even it, though i know it, I should, it had shortcomings th this was a surprise for me i thought we'd have to wait longer for this i thought we'd have to he hear about it like next e3 but yeah, um me too i mean it's looking like a really strong uh quarter one for switch considering there's pokemon and then two months later this game mm -hmm. um okay well that looks great uh anyways moving on the next thing was metro a metro dread trailer uh yep. and i kind of like didn't hold oh, on let me just tell you before you i get into too much detail so i closed my eyes and i took off my headphones and i waited a few minutes until the trailer was over i, d I saw nothing of this trailer okay so i'm like, i'm i've blacked out from this game completely okay so i gotta say like a lot of the i feel like they're in a way showing up too much of it now even though i still think there's lots more we haven't seen but they they didn't really show anything new in this trailer it was almost like a re-edit of uh footage we've already seen but I, again, I haven't seen two of the other trailers, too. True. There is one boss that I think I spoiled for you last time. Um, do you remember? Uh, it might have been... My, either way, I don't want to say it. But okay, I, yeah, I don't say it for I, people yeah. listening. But it's like, it's in the commercials now. Like, it's... It, yeah, okay. Like, is it a spoiler? Like, I don't know. And they, they've now shown this this old kind... Like, this classic boss they brought back again. So I don't think it's too much of a, a surprise, but... The editing, this trailer, it looks so freaking awesome. Like, the, this game is, yeah, to me, is I'm, just... I'm so stoked. I, I'm very stoked. And also... I think it's, this is going to be game of the year for me, or number two. Like, it's going to be yeah, top two. I, I can't imagine this not being on my top five game of the year. Um, it looks so good, and I just... Yeah, I, I think it's going to be huge, and just the, just the style and the music of the trailer, it, it was the best trailer yet. And as I was watching it, I was just kind of thinking, like, why couldn't this have been the first trailer they showed? Like, if this was the first trailer they showed, people would be that much more stoked. Mm -hmm. You know, like you would have been like, yeah, cheering, but said you had to wait six months of being di disappointed by it to see, <laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> um, but they also announced uh, with Metroid that the Volume Eight Metroid report is coming out uh, on the website that like discusses the different zones of the world or something, and I'm not going to read it. Uh, of the, oh, okay, of this game, I didn't know if you were talking about like lore of the past games. No, okay. it's, it's like they've done the, these Metroid reports, like uh, they have eight volumes of them now, and that's where like we learned that there's sequence breaking and kind of learned a little bit of the story history like they've really promoted this game a lot and that's why i think emmy that's, that's again that's why i think emmy could really be the smash character yeah they, you're right you're right they're just I, doing a lot of promotion yeah i, I just think emmy doesn't have like the, the history that Neither would be Violet. needed but i mean as the final character like right? the final smash bros character i i don't know if even nintendo when they thought of the final six fighters thought of them in the order they'd come out you know they might they I, might I not don't. have and they're just like okay like whatever one gets done um but i think they have enough sense to not like final finish it on like uh kazuya you know what i mean yeah or kazuya um so uh yeah anyways uh, metroid dread looks amazing comes out soon mm -hmm. uh after that they had an n a nintendo switch online update um which is part good but part bad um for one it's more money it's an expansion uh, they're adding N64 and Sega Genesis. Comes out in late October. Sega they... Genesis is the, is the system that we had as kids, right? No, we we never had a Sega. Oh, Sega... we had a, what do we have? A Game Gear? We had a Game Gear. A Game Gear handheld. Sega Genesis was like the equal to, to Super Nintendo. Okay, I just didn't. I I knew we had one of those black systems. I just didn't know what it was was called. Like when Super Nintendo was out, like Genesis was like its lead competitor, and the two of them were like neck and neck the entire time. Hmm. There okay, was no know. like Super Nintendo crushed it. it in it crushed it in Japan, but in North America like they were neck and neck, and it's it was actually that, it's crazy that now like Nintendo's absorbed the Genesis games <laughs> into its own platform. I know, yeah, and and you know it's funny because a lot of those games are like you can get in other Sega releases, like they have like these kind of Sega Genesis anthologies. Like Sega re-releases their games a lot, um, but it's I bet you the some of that cost of the expansion goes to Sega, and that's why mm -hmm. you know. 
Um, but the lineup looked really, really good. Like, it, I mean, I was really surprised to see Sin and Punishment and Winback are going to be on Switch by the end of o- October. Like, that's amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, and, of course, all the classics. And I, I think it said they can have all the features of the Nintendo Switch Online for Super Nintendo and Nintendo, which means you can cause save states, you can rewind it, you can do all these cool things that are going to make it more helpful to beat those super hard games for, for Genesis and things like that. Yeah. Um, and, and Sin and Punishment, which is super hard. And I don't think you've ever played Sin and Punishment, have you? The original. I didn't play the original or the, the second game. They're both amazing. Like, I played both on uh, the Wii, because the first one that came on Virtual Console for Wii. And, um, man, if you ever get a chance to play the first or the second one, like, they're amazing. This, they hold up. The, the, the second one really holds up. Um, yeah, they're, they're all-time classics, in my opinion. I'm also really excited to play Star Fox 64 again, and even, honestly, Yoshi's Story a bit. And Same. Mar- Mario... And Mario Tennis 64. Which is the best Mario Tennis still. Yeah. Uh, and I'm, I'm excited to play Mar- F-Zero X. Oh, which, yeah. And they, come out, that, but that doesn't come out the moment it, it No, launches. it doesn't. And also they showed um, Banjo. Did you see that at the very end? Oh, I did not see that. They like did this thing where they're like, oh, and we're going to keep releasing new games for these consoles. And they did like a quick little thing where they showed like Majora's Mask, F-Zero X. Um, oh, yeah. Mario Golf. Mario Golf. Pokemon, and then Pokemon, like the, Pokemon, Snap. Pokemon Snap. And then like the very last game was like Banjo and like the box art creeped out and then it cut. So it's like you had to like catch it, you know? <laughs> um, so that's really cool. I mean, the hard thing with a lot of these games is like, you know, I already have Super Mario 64. I have the 3DS remake of Ocarina of Time. Um, like a lot of these games are like better played elsewhere. <laughs> even Majora's Mask and he, I, um, even Banjo. Like there's an HD version on Xbox. So yeah, the best thing to do is honestly go through the uh, the list of games of which games you would play and whether that's worth it. Yeah, I, I think it's it's like you said, it's one of those things where you kind of just like go down memory lane a bit and kind of play a little of each, and maybe you dive into one a little more and this and that. But um, but you know, if it's five dollars more a year, I'll probably just get it and not even think about it. Yeah, so about that, do you do you really think it's going to be $5 a year, so every month is going to be an extra, like, 25 cents? Like, I, I think it's going to be a little more than that. I think it'll be, like, a well, dollar a month more. Well, I'm just saying right now we're paying, what, 20-something dollars. I mean, I think U.S. is, like, 20-something dollars uh, for the year. I think we pay about $3 a month or so. Yeah, like $2.50 a month. So in the yeah, year, for, Canada, for thir- Canada. About $30, yeah. So I just mean, it's to add one you know another feat just one more feature i can't imagine being like it's 15 dollars. i'd be like this is outrageous yeah if, it, if it's if it's ten dollars that'd be my maximum for a year for a year yeah and that, the, that's the like, whole year plans thirty dollars yeah that, I, that's how i'd feel too but i mean the, you're right but also like this is somewhat significant like they used to sell these n64 games on virtual console for ten dollars each I know, but if they said, "Oh, it went from thirty to fifty-two dollars or something," I'd be like, "Dude, I'm I'm out." Yeah, I'm. I mean, as of now, I'll probably I, I I'm probably gonna get it the day it comes out. But I mean, it is one of those things where in a year from now, I might cancel my expansion if it's not being updated regularly. I'm not playing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, if it's five dollars a year, you're right. I'll forget about it. But if it's like twenty or, or ten or twenty a year, yeah, it's not not really worth it for me. Yeah. Um, the other thing is like fifty dollars for a Genesis controller is like that's heinous. Like <laughs> that's a real, real <laughs> price hike. That, that that is crazy to me. I know it's wireless, and uh, I don't know. I I, I almost want to get the N sixty four controller, but for fifty dollars, I don't know. I think I can just no, I'm use. Not buying. I don't uh, need that. I mean, yeah, it's like the the Switch controls have everything you need for an N sixty four game. Um, but the other neat thing is that all of Nintendo Switch Online, uh, like Virtual Console or older games, they can be played online. So, like, you and I could effectively play two-player anything from this lineup. Hmm. Yeah, and it's it's not... You can't, like, do ranked play and you can't do play with strangers. Like, you have to, like, deliberately, like, sink in with a friend, I believe. Um, but, like, if you and I wanted to play Mario Tennis 64 online, now we actually could. Oh, that'd be cool, yeah. Yeah, so maybe that's worth trying or, or something. But um, yeah. interesting that not a single Mario Party game made that list. <laughs> I mean, I, I guarantee it'll come in six months after Super You're Mario right. Party or whatever. Yeah. You're right. But definitely for you, I, I gotta say, like, play Sin and Punishment. It's like, it's so imp- it's not only like a really great game, but it's just super impressive what they were able to pull off on the N64. It's like, it's a very, it was a very late N64 game. Like, so late in the in the console cycle that it, there was no point of localizing it for, for North America. Mm-hmm. But it's just, like, it's super impressive. And, and somehow it's all in English, too, right? Um, so you'll be fine. Yeah. 
Did we um? Did we own the game Winback? Did we? Own yeah, that? we did. I because I rem- I remember when they showed the game box. I was like, I know we had that game. I just don't remember the gameplay. I gotta look it up. You know what and, the cool uh, thing with Winback? It was like very early, um, kind of like Gears of War style. Like you know where you like cover mechanic, like th- over the shoulder third person shooter, like kind of widescreen esque uh, duck and cover mechanics. Yeah. This Winback did it much before uh, Gears of War. So a lot of people will say, oh, Gears of War pioneered that. And people will like, no, no, Winback. <laughs> um, I hope... Uh, so, what are, so what are some games that you... That weren't shown that you would hope um, are brought to this? I mean, that's a good question. Because my, probably my number three N64 games that I want to play were Sin and Punishment, Winback, and F-Zero X. So I'm just trying to think. I mean, Shadows of the M... Uh, yeah, it's Shadows of the Empire, probably Star Wars. Um, I'd probably jump into Pilot Wings. Do you think they'll? Uh, I don't know how it all works with licensing. Like, what do you think about GoldenEye or Perfect Dark? Even so, I don't think GoldenEye will ever happen, just because of the James Bond license, you know. Yeah. And that that that's the problem there. Like, at least with Perfect Dark and Banjo, like Microsoft owns that. Microsoft and Nintendo can make a deal. But with something like um, GoldenEye, like who knows where Bond's going to be in five years from now? You know, MGM might even get sold to mm-hmm. Apple or Amazon. So it's really hard to say. Like I don't, th- I think they kind of don't really want to go down that road. I think they're, all- yeah. It's it's almost funny that such a classic, beloved, staple game was tied to a, a movie. You know, because it's probably the only one in history that's really like that. Yeah. Other one than of the D- Disney movies. Mm-hmm. One of the games that I... There's a few games that I, I hope to see. Um, I'd love to see Diddy Kong Racing. Yeah. I'd love to see Jet Force Gemini. Yeah, and that could happen. Although it... Yeah. And um, I'd love to see Pokemon Stadium. Okay. And... Um, yeah, you were big on Pokemon Stadium back in the day. In 1080 and Wave Race, I think they'll come eventually. Yes, I, I forgot. I would have loved to see those two as well. And, and, Excite, and Excite Bike 64. Yeah, and you know Banjo Two or whatever, but one of the, the one of the ones that I really really want is Blast Core. Yep. Yeah. Um, so here's the thing: like I have I have Rare Replay on uh, Xbox, so I like I have all those games. Like I have Jet Force Gemini, I have Blast Core, uh, which I used to think was called Blast Corpse. Oh, that's a that's a rare game. Yeah. Oh, I did not know that was a rare game. Yeah. So same Jet Force Gemini and Blast Core. Um, so I don't know like I kind of played both a little bit on Game Pass and they just and 64 games don't really hold up as well as we might remember like they're all running at 20 frames a second they have weird controls it was before dual analog existed so there's just a little bit of weirdness in a lot of these games Uh, and to be honest a lot of the games on N64 that I would want to play I'd I'd rather to see a remaster of Um, yeah but you can't remaster them all No, you're right, but I mean, you know, with Banjo, like, it's much better to play it Banjo and Banjo-Tooie on an Xbox, where it's at least running at 30 frames or 60 frames in HD, where Mm -hmm. I'm kind of curious how this is going to look. Like, are we, are we going to get, is Mario 64 on Nintendo Switch Online going to look like Mario 64 does on the Super Mario 3D All-Stars? Like, is it going to, is it going to be up-resed, or is it going to be 480i or p upscaled through our tv and looking disgusting like I, i'm interested to know yeah. so that's something and also like games like um diddy kong racing like are is the frame rate gonna get better and i remember mario kart 64 uh and they showed mario kart 64 right yeah of course they did yeah that game like ran at an unlocked frame rate and was so janky on the it, it was janky on the n64 but when they re-released it on on the wii because it was an uncapped frame rate some of the levels were actually like broken so you'd play like with four players. I don't know if you remember this, but like some of the levels, if you played with four players, would like all of a sudden run like they're in fast fast motion. Because oh. back in the day, because they ran they, like DK, I believe DK Jungle was one of the levels that really, really chugged on the N64. So they basically sped it like behind the scenes, like sped that level up so that it like made sense to play like with a slower frame rate. It's hard to explain, but... I mean, someone much techier than me will be able to explain this, but I'm, I'm just wondering how that's all going to work now. Like, hmm. because for them really to release a proper Mario Kart 64, they'd have to actually either retain all the frame rate issues of the original, or they'd have to do a full-on remaster. And I don't, I don't know. Like, it's just not, I don't know. I'm, it's, I'm like half excited about this and half not excited about this. Um, yeah. But I am going to get it. And also, those Genesis games, like, that's a really great lineup of Genesis games as well. So, 
I'm probably on board. Nice. Um, and I gotta say, like, just having traveled, uh, some of these Nintendo Switch Online, like, you know, older games, they're great for portable for me. Like, sometimes I don't want to play a dual analog game on the Joy-Cons with a lot of focusing and this and that. Mm-hmm. It's kind of nice to be able, oh, I'll just throw open this Genesis app and, like, play a little of this and try this old game and play a little of that. And, you know, it's it's fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, anyways, okay, so next they show, or was there anything else you want to talk about N64-wise? Uh, no, I kind of listed my games and... I mean, I don't. I'm probably going to get it just if the price is right, and we'll see what happens. I mean, it's interesting that Game Boy was rumored, and that's not what's happening. Uh, I kind of once they said it costed more, I expected them to say and Game Boy. Um, yeah, because I'm sure, but I'm sure they're going to do it again in two, two or three years. Say, oh, the Nintendo Online is getting expansion, expansion pack, which is Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance for even more money. Yeah, I mean, and you know, I was also hoping that this. Um, whenever they did do their inevitable NSO expansion, it would have come with things like friends lists and voice chat and, you know... Better internet. Uh, yeah. Online games. Yeah. Things like that. But, I mean, you know what? I gotta say, Nintendo Switch Online has, has been pretty great. For the price. For the price, it's been great. For the price. It's, and I mean, It's I, pretty crap, but for the oh, price, I don't, it's great. I, I mean, there's a lot of free games. Like, Tetris 99 is great. The Mario, yeah, Super Mario World is 35. Of, for those kind of services, but for, like, the actual, you know, the the online gaming part of it it's not good yeah but that's you can't really blame this service for that i mean yes you can it's like that's what the money for playstation goes towards but i mean i can i can play i can play fortnite and i can play diablo 3 on switch with all the online functions and voice chat and joining friends and everything it's because those developers took the time to implement that into their yeah. games. Okay. Where Nintendo doesn't really. And, you know, it would be nice if there was some, like, system-level architecture that handled that, like on Xbox. But there's not. So, mm-hmm. developers are... It's like, you know, it's it's a weird situation. Um, but it is what it is. Like, like you said, it's so cheap. And for all these old games and for, like, the few exclusive uh, games they've... Like, Tetris 99 and Mario 35. I think it's been worth it. Yeah. Um, so not, not complaining. Um, although I just, again, I just think I kind of expected this expansion cost expansion to come with the switch pro and a whole bunch of new features and whatever. It's, it seems a little, I don't know, just weird, <laughs> like weirdly premature, but mm-hmm. whatever. Uh, anyways, let's move on. Uh, next they showed up a, a couple of, uh, like redux games, like uh, Shadowrun shadow run trilogy is coming to switch. I, do you ever, have you ever played this? Wait, did I miss? Yeah, I missed some games. Yeah, it was called the Shadowrun Trilogy. It's like the three Shadowrun games. It's kind of like oh, a yeah. um, XCOM I, style. This, these are uh, like all whatever to me. I mean, they are classics, but I yeah, they're not. It's not my style. Um, so, but whatever comes next year. Mm-hmm. Uh, the game they show next, I'm actually gonna buy. It's the Castlevania Advance Collection. Yeah, I might get that too. It looks really, really good. Like, um, just. You know, they have more than just the three advanced games. They have save states. You can freeze it. There's, like, art books. It's all sorts of stuff. Like, it's a great collection. Yeah, I, lo- I love the DS um, trilogy. I think it's the DS 3DS trilogy, like Order of Ecclesia and uh, Don no, Soros. it's just DS. D- uh, it was Don oh, Soros, just... or, uh, Portrait of Ruin, and Order of Ecclesia. Yeah, so I played all three of those and loved them. So part of me is like, well, this looks, you know, more of the same, but 3D games that I haven't played. So that's why I'm, I'm really tempted to get this. Yeah. yeah, and to be honest, I don't think the graphics are going to be that much like worse in the advanced games than they were in the DS ones. No, I, I agree. I think they're, um, they look very similar. Yeah, they. I, I'm going to get it even if I don't end up beating it. But I got to say, things like save states ch- literally change these types of games um, because you don't have to find sa- you don't have to like find where to save, and you can like go to a boss and like kind of cheese the boss if it's too hard, and yeah, it, it makes these games a lot more playable. So I don't know. I, I'm going to grab it. Comes out today. Mm-hmm. Um, next, they showed Act Razor Renaissance, which is a remake or a remaster, re-release of Act Razor for SNES. And now, I don't have you ever played Act Razor? I had never even heard of this game, but it looks pretty freaking cool. So it's a, I believe it, it was an SNES game, but I believe it was a launch title um, from Square, I think, and it's kind of like an action RPG. Um, mixed with like a town building. Yeah, it with mixed mixed with like a SimCity style city builder um but this kind of came out of nowhere and i think there are act razor fans out there that probably love this um comes out today the graphics looked kind of weird to me like 
they looked like high quality, low quality. I don't, I don't know how to describe it. Like the end, anim- it almost kind of reminded me of um, uh, Ghosts and Goblins. Yeah, and this goblins. looks like a you know uh, a smaller budget remake, but I actually think it looks great. I, I think every part of it. Look- I-, I have no I have no issues with the graphics at all in hmm. any of it. Well, if it gets good reviews, you should get it so you can talk. About I know. It. I'm I'm really I. I actually am more interested in this than I am a lot of the other games shown. Interesting. I, I'm. Su- I know. Really I was surprised, surprised too because I, I just have never heard of this. But I I love town building games. I I think they're super fun, and the the fighting kind of reminds me of like a two D Dark Souls. So I, I, you know, I it it really is scratching my itch right now. Okay. Well, I mean, just be aware that it is a remake of a Super Nintendo game, so it might be more oh, yeah. dated than you might want. It might be ridiculously hard. But yeah, yeah. Look into reviews. Yeah, um, for sure. After that, they showed off Delta Rune Chapter One and Two. I don't know what this is. Is this like a uh, an expansion I, to um, what's it called? Um, Undertale, right? Undertale. I thought it was. An, I thought it was Undertale. I don't. I don't know. I've never heard of the first chapter because apparently the first chapter has already been out. Yeah, but, I was very confused by this. Yeah, I just. I wasn't. I haven't been following this company or whatever this is. I I can't imagine this not being somehow linked to Undertale, but I don't. I mean, it looks cool. I, I want to play Undertale still. So if I played Undertale and loved it, I, I would pick these up. But I'm still, <laughs> I'm still gonna wait. I, I still have to buy Undertale and be and play that. It's not my type of game. Um, Undertale. It's it's the kind of RPG where like you don't see any of the battle animation. You just kind of like see the enemy, and it's text. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I, ha- I I downloaded Undertale for like a hot minute on uh, Game Pass and tried it and wasn't didn't speak to me but i i just I, at first when they showed this trailer i thought it was undertale 2 and i was like oh, that's well. what i thought it was too i'm like that's a huge announcement for like you know a, a new undertale 2 and it kind of got me to thinking like is it worth it for these indie developers to do these expansions rather than sequels like i feel like a sequel to something like this would like re- relating it to something like uh shovel knight wouldn't or hollow knight or or i mean you know hollow knight's different because it's it's so big and so huge but like something like uh shovel knight for example they've had so many expansions and i haven't really bought any of the expansions but if it had just been shovel knight number two i would have been a lot more excited so i feel like if i was an indie developer who had a popular hit i might do what i might do something like what hollow what the uh, team cherry is doing and rather than like milk out the franchise for years go quiet for a bit and then come out with another big game like silk song is essentially going to be hollow knight number two it it is, but I was the only reason I brought it up is because it was originally just going to be a big expansion. Yeah, I know. Like, and, and, but in all fairness, Hollow Knight did have three expansions. There are three expansions. But weren't they? Didn't they? weren't the, weren't they included with the Switch release, or did you have to pay extra for them? Um, I think two came. You didn't have to pay extra for them. I, they were all. F- I think the first two were, or the edition that came with the Switch released came with the first two already on it, and then the third one. Um, was a free one at the end, so I don't know if anyone okay. anyone had to pay, play for it, pay for it, but we certainly did not. So no but, one's paid for uh, expansions or DLC to, to Hollow Knight at all. I, I don't know on Switch, not uh, no, as far as I know. I'm pretty sure then the the, P, the PS4 and uh, Xbox releases later were the same because yeah, but I just mean the PC I think came even before the Switch. Didn't yeah, it? it did. So I, I don't know how that one worked. Um, but yeah, so this the Silk Song was supposed to be an expansion. It was supposed to be the last big expansion. And then they said, we just have so many creative ideas, and Hollow Knight was doing so well at that point that they just said, we're going to make a full-fledged exp- a new game. Yeah. Um, but, I, I, I mean, I guess I, I guess I like that approach more. Where it's Me like, too. Okay, we get Hollow Knight 1, we get Hollow Knight 2, we get SteamWorld Dig 1, we get Dig 2. I don't, I, I don't I, I like the approach of uh, Shovel Knight, where it's like, oh, now we have like a bunch of spinoffs and expansions and a new character and an amiibo, and like, just give me Shovel Knight number 2. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Like just, or like, or like, you know, all the side games of Shovel Knight, the puzzle game that's coming out, and, and it's like, you know, just make the sequel. Yeah, like as good as those games all are, I I think at this point I would, it's making me want the sequel less, you know, because yeah, it's I'm like over, it's like oversaturated. Yeah, exactly. Um, but anyways, let, let's talk about that for a second. So Silk Song was a no show. Um, I think a lot of people expected to see it here. Some even speculated it could be announced here, or not announced, but shown here and then released early next year um I, what do you yeah. think like it was totally it's totally been a no-show for now a bunch of directs i i mean i know it's a small team and they once in a while will post something on reddit or something saying they're still working on it don't worry like it just they're always adding more and always kind of they're enjoying their process in covid and like i i'm not stressed about it you know becoming vaporware 
Mm-hmm. Um, but oh, it's definitely yeah. not vaporware. No, yeah, and I, I just, I, I think it could be, you know, holiday twenty twenty two or later. Like I, I'm in, uh, it could be a while. Yeah. Um, hopefully it's holiday twenty twenty two. You know. Yeah. I mean, it was announced like in uh, what the Nintendo Direct of twenty nineteen. Am I right? Yeah. So and it's I been think... three years or so. And they've been working on it, I think, before that for a bit. And I think the first game took them they said four years to make Hmm. so but they also said i I think they also came out and said this game is bigger than the first one um but you know they have they have a lot of the ideas already down of how the game works and the the underlying yeah the mechanics and and trial and error yeah Yeah. yeah, so but i mean you know four years is kind of approaching so we'll we'll see team cherry strikes me as the type of developers who, who don't like give you weekly updates and when they're ready to show it off they show it off with a release date, polished and ready to go. You yeah, know? And it, like melts minds. Yeah, like I, I have a feeling that might sh- like it could be like at the next uh, E3 direct and then like released in September, like the and, and, bit, yeah. and that kind of thing, right? So I, I think it's it is one of those games not to be like, oh, they haven't talked about it, so it's not coming. And you got to think also, I mean, in all honesty, the the nerve or how nervous that team is. Again, they're a small team. They had an unbelievable success of a game, and you know they're a little bit kind of like all eyes are on them. And they can take as long as they want. People are frothing at the mouth for their their next game. Yeah. The last th- the last thing that they want to do is show it too early and, and butcher the the show. And you know, I, I think they're just playing it tight to the chest because one, they know it's just building more and more hype when it does get shown. Yeah. And two, they really don't want to mess it up because this is their second game ever. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess I I just I I feel com- confident that when they do show it off, it's gonna look. Oh me me great. too. I I have no doubt. No uh, doubt. Yeah. I'm I'm. That's like. Even though it doesn't have a release date, it's definitely one of my most wanted games. And one one of these days when there's a, a quiet week, well, we should do our like top ten most wanted games or something. And oh yeah, for sure. So that can be number one. Uh, well, <laughs> no, probably not, but on the list. Oh, it's uh, my number one. So after that, uh, they showed kind of a, a weirdly a clip reel like of like four games. It feels like really funny when they have like you know they show like twenty five games, including Dying Light one and two. And then they go and they're like, oh, yeah, and here's our clip reel of, like, the three games that, like, we didn't care to give an extra 30 seconds to, you know? Mm-hmm. It's like, Shin Megami Tensei Five got thrown in there, and I was like, really? Like, is that really how you're going to do Shin Megami Tensei? Like, <laughs> this is, like, your big, big JRPG exclusive. Um, so I, I kind of felt that sucked for them. Uh, I don't really care about most of those. They showed Hot Wheels Racing. I, I don't. It looks like a lower frame rate version of what's going to come on the other systems. Um, but they did show that Rune Factory 5 is going to come out in March. Hmm. Okay. I don't really care about Rune Factory 5, but it's a it's a brand new entry in a pretty popular series that reviews well and sells well enough. And yeah. I think it's by Natsume. It's like a um, mix of Harvest Moon. And it's like a mix of Animal Crossing, Harvest Moon, and, a, and an RPG. Mm-hmm. So I don't, I don't think you're going to get it. I don't think no. I'm definitely probably not gonna but, get yeah, it yeah i know they're i know they're popular but it, it's it's just goes to show that like you know it's another fairly big release in q1 um so yeah. i thought that, that was interesting like you know people are gonna have to choose between that and uh triangle strategy well, i guess Honestly, you... be- between nintendo and even sony and I, I don't quite know microsoft like there is a pretty stacked lineup in those first three or four months of 2022 yeah, no kidding. I mean, with Horizon in February and Pokemon and and Elden Ring and like, there's a, it's a pretty sick lineup. You know, the funny thing is, I, as sick as it is, I don't think I'm. None of them are really on my to buy list. That's uh, crazy. That's I mean, absolutely crazy. To me. Maybe I'll get Pokemon Arceus, um, but yeah, uh, don't think anything's on there for me. Even though I, I acknowledge that it's a great lineup, it's just uh, JRPGs aren't really my thing. Yeah, and, you don't uh, like you don't like the From series either. I mean, I mean, if they put an easy mode in it, it'd be a day one, but they're not, so nope. Um, but anyways, <laughs> let's move on to the next thing. So they brought Miyamoto this, out. Yeah, the biggest biggest announcement of this the This is kind of the biggest announcement, kind of not. Uh, when he first walked out, I mean, all I was thinking was, okay, you're gonna finally show us Pikmin Four. Oh, I thought he was gonna show Mario Odyssey Two. Oh yeah, I mean, I don't think he really, I don't think he really is behind those games. I don't think he yeah, really he, was a... Yeah, he's behind this movie. Yeah, he's behind this movie, but I think if he does have pet projects, it, it would be something like a Pikmin 4. Like, I think Pikmin 3 might be the last game he directed. Hmm. Pik, or, or Pikmin 3, yeah. Pikmin 3 was the last... I don't think he's actually directed a single Switch game. I think he's just kind of a figurehead and a like, a overse- like an oversight director of other designers. 
that he um, didn't he didn't direct uh star fox zero you're right he did direct star fox zero so that that or produced it so that was his last game he kind of figured like he kind of um really led mm-hmm. so i was really hoping he'd come out and say hey i've been working on this great amazing switch game for three years like boom but um that didn't happen i guess but the, i don't know the movie is coming out i don't know what to think about it um for one i'm kind of surprised it's coming out like a year from now and there's no trailer uh, the other thing is, he said spe- specifically that Mario's going to talk a lot, and that's not a good thing to me, especially now that it's Chris Pratt, um, yeah, I, oh who's like, God. you know, super, he goes to a homophobic church and stuff. Yeah. Uh, so I'm just thank not... You, thank you for putting that, because I was going to put that. Yeah, I mean, all, he's a, and also, like, speculated he's a Trump supporter and everything. So, like, he's just kind of a dirty stain on Mario. Um, I, I don't really like him, and I kind of wish it was just charles martinet doing mario's voice and i yeah. don't understand why charles martinet is there um yeah. he must not... be giving coaching on uh, the voice inflections and stuff yeah i mean it's just it's so weird that they got this giant cast i just don't can't picture them with voices like it's such a weird thing to have you know mario and dk and peach like have like serious dialogue I need I need to see what the animation's looking like to put imagine their voice to it because it's like I don't know if this is gonna look like the Pokemon movie, the Detective Pikachu, like super realistic like that, like like. You oh, know, I'm pretty sure it'll be like fully animated. Like there won't be like real real elements in I, it. I know, but I'm just saying like how hardcore is it gonna look, or is it gonna look you know a bit smoother, more like a despicable 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 me. I think it's gonna look like Despicable Me, considering it's from I, that I, same studio. I just can't imagine any of these voices because the problem really. Is that these characters do already have voices? Sure, they speak very like minorly, but they have voices. Where you know Link in Zelda, you could you could put a voice to him, and it would be fine because he doesn't really have a voice. But Jack Black does not sound like Bowser. Like that's not Bowser's voice, you know. And Chris but, Pratt, th- you know what, Mother Jack, of God, does not sound like Mario. Jack Black as Bowser is probably is, the, I know is one of the better ones. Is I probably agree. the best one. I love Jack Black, and I hope he has a I hope Bowser has a song. And I and I think. You know, if you go, if you you played Super Mario Sunshine, you heard Bowser's voice in that game. It's not really that good, anyways. So I almost welcome kind of like a like something a little. Yeah, new. I, I agree. I think I think quite a few of these actors will probably do a good job. Just for me, it's like it's hard to. It's like, for example, Sonic in the the Sonic movie. He the, whoever did his voice sounds like he did from the cartoon. Yeah, that, they did like a great did, job on that one. Yeah, where you know Luigi Charlie Day. I, I think he's hilarious. I don't really think he's going to sound anything like Luigi because Luigi actually has a voice. Like, I know what Luigi sounds like in my head. I can imagine it right yeah. now. It's not Charlie Day. So it, it's going to be hard to wrap my head around that. I think, again, besides for Chris Pratt, for the most part, the lineup's actually pretty good. Um, like, I, I like a lot of these actors. Um, Same. And I, I think it's funny that, like, Cranky Kong is going to have a voice and Toad, Ke- uh, Keenan I know Key that, is Toad. I yeah um and uh what anya taylor joy is the is the queen as a uh, princess peach like the, she's some... the she's the girl from queen of Ga- queen or queen's, queen's gambit. gambit yeah okay yeah. i mean also it's funny like I, I like that dk's in it and cranky kong's in it and I, I think this movie might be terrible but it also might be good like i i kind of hope it's just like a non-stop visual ride you know what i so, mean so yeah so what i said on uh on the forums i said this game this this movie will either be terrible like train wreck terrible or pretty good but either way, a lot of people are day one, no matter what. Like this game, like it could yeah. get it could get an eight on Rotten Tomatoes, and I'm still day one. Like I want I, I'm just day to one. see the just to see the train wreck, you know, just to see what amazingness or terribleness or like the memes that will come from this movie. And you know, it's still Miyamoto still deeply behind it, so it's gonna have something clever. It's not like a total westernized, yeah, terrible thing. Um, I just I think the thing that really bothers me is Chris Pratt. Like everything else, I could be like, okay, this could be good, but. Not Chris Pratt. Like he just really. doesn't sound like Mario. And no, like, and I, I mean maybe if he's he, a like, douchebag. Yeah, maybe if he really, really like, I, it really needs to be where you watch this movie and you can't tell that it's him. Mm-hmm. Because I just can't picture it any other way. Like if it actually sounds like him at all. Like it does in that um, Pixar troll movie. Uh, just no. Like it'd be terrible. Yeah, it's it's funny because I mean, not that the other actors aren't famous, as, you know, but. Um... Except for maybe Jack Black, they're not as familiar voices as Chris Pratt is. You know, like like 
Yeah. If, Seth Rogen, I, though. Seth Rogen's he did Pumbaa. True, and, Seth, and Seth like, Rogen. But I find Donkey Kong kind of like a side humor character. It's like, you know, he, he played the... I think he did uh, Pumbaa pretty well in The Lion King. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Chris Pratt is just like... His voice is indistinguishable. And he's in so many movies that like you just can't dissociate his voice from his who he is. I mean, unless they just surprise, unless he pulls a Heath Ledger Joker on us and he just completely changes yeah. his voice. I mean, you, really, you don't know how he's getting coached because he might change his voice like, hey, how's it go? Like that, Mario. Like he could yeah. actually try that and see how it goes. I, I mean, but. you know, I guess I'm cautiously optimistic, um, but I think probably the, the conversation around this is probably Chris Pratt sucks. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't yeah, think there's totally. much conversation yeah. other than that, you know? like I, I'm going to be similar to you i'm extremely pessimistic about this but i'm my hype is on full thrusters <laughs> yeah i mean it's it's funny when miyamoto was like oh chris pratt isn't he so cool like i i just like such a cringe moment it's like wow yeah um, it's like it's like almost felt like he was detached from reality it's like or it's like quite... oh yeah is, is people in japan are just like that homophobic that they like are really cool with the homophobic actor as well mm -hmm. like, <laughs> i don't know what it is but it was just yeah, it was a little bit tone deaf. It's like oh yeah, this like it's like me standing up and be like oh yeah, we got this Japanese voice actor. He's so cool and great. And it's like back in Japan, they're like we all hate him. Yeah, <laughs> you know exactly. Yeah, um, but I don't know. I'm sure he, uh, some people like Chris Pratt. Um, well, I mean he is huge in like the Marvel universe, and not everyone knows those kind of things that we know. Yeah, you're right. Um, but anyways, I don't, I don't know. It's it, I mean it's a movie. I, I I'm like so much less excited about a 3D animated movie than a game, and I'm almost disappointed that Miyamoto is spending his time on it. But I just hope it doesn't hurt the brand. You know, I, I hope it doesn't like damage the Mario brand. I don't think it will. I, yeah, I, I I don't know. It's just like something like Sonic. I don't know. I mean, and that movie. Hey, I love that. That movie is awesome, and I'm excited for the sequel. Yeah, it was. It was a good movie, um, and I'm excited for the sequel too. Jim Carrey makes it, obviously. Oh no, and, and the guy who plays with you know, it's it's all around good. Every character was good. I, it's a solid seven. Like it's a good. It's like it does the job. But um, it's interesting that something like Sonic did so well in theaters doesn't really result in sales of uh, Sonic games doing super well. Meanwhile, Pokemon. Um, Detective Pikachu was a good movie as well. Doesn't do as well as Sonic in the movie in the box office. Yet the Pokemon games sell like ten times what a Sonic game sells. So it's very clear to me that um, a movie doesn't really reflect upon like a brand, a game brand sales. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, anyways, hopefully it, hopefully it's good. I guess. Um, but uh, okay, so after that they kind of showed what I would call like the two ending like bigger announcements. Um, the, the first one being Splatoon 3 and, th and this is why you said earlier you thought it was too long I, I don't think it's too long because for one this is a huge game uh, I, I know I know like I, it or not I mean this is a 10 million selling franchise um, and also it, it wasn't that long but if the fact that it's like near the end of the direct and they brought the developer out it's just a little bit of a different feel it's not like in the middle of the direct they just went all Splatoon um, what do you think about this trailer and are you planning to buy it I mean, I'll probably get it, um, especially now that I have, like, you know, a better setup to play online. I'll actually probably play this one online with you as opposed to the... Number two, I was just, like, in a weird flux with where my system and gaming setup was. Well, same here, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think I'll, I'll, I'll get this game. Um, the trailer didn't do much for me. Like, it looks like Splatoon 2 and 1, in all honesty. Uh, yep. the, the, sing the single player campaign didn't really show enough to change anything. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's just more Splatoon, but yeah, okay, I'm I'm all aboard. Why not? I mean, yeah, I kind of feel the same. Where the trailer felt like almost it was just like flashing visuals at me that didn't have any context. Mm -hmm. um, generally speaking, I'm not really someone who gets excited about oh new weapons. Like I, I don't care. Like I, I don't. I get some people do, but new weapons isn't really like a big deal for me in in game sequels. <laughs> Um, I was kind of hoping they were gonna announce like you know five on five or eight on eight multiplayer versus four on four. So it looks like the turf war is generally the same with new levels. Um, where I, I get, I mean, I like the turf war, don't get me wrong, but I get more excited in Splatoon about things like the Octo expansion, the single player, and like the Salmon Run co op. Like, so I, I guess I didn't get any of that. But the one thing I, I did get from this is that this, it looks like they are putting an emphasis on the single player. I know, yeah. So, th and I, that was the main reason I played one and two. I, I played the single player more than anything. Mm -hmm. Um, and so yeah, I, I'm excited for it too. It looks like it has kind of an interesting story that'll slowly, you know, come together. 
Uh, yeah, it looks like they're yeah. doing different things with the story. It's not so much of like a, like the previous two Splatoon games. The the main story seemed more like a like a set of challenges to teach you the game. Yeah. Where this one looks like much more focused. Like it, it's called uh, Return of the Mammalians, like Return of Mammals. Yeah. Um, and, it, and it looks like they're fleshing out the the lore of the world of the Squid Kids in uh, Splatoon. Like, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Like it kind of started as like this kind of cool idea for a multiplayer game and now they've actually created a world around it which I think totally. is totally awesome. I mean it's one yeah. of their premier franchises. It's amazing that it like somehow was birthed on the Wii U. Late I know, stage it's just Wii like, U. I know. But it really is that fun and that good and I mean now there's that Netflix show that's kind of like it. I don't know if you've seen it. Um Oh, what's it called? It's called Squid something. Oh, I, I the Squid Squid game. Yeah. I haven't I started the first 5 minutes. I really want to watch it. I thought that um, show was supposed to be dark. I, oh, isn't it? Isn't it like a game show? Oh, I think it's like a really dark game show. Oh, I I, haven't... I, I, I watched like the first five minutes. I think it's like de- like death games. Oh, cool! I'm gonna watch it tonight. But um, yeah. Anyways, um, yeah, I, I get the impression that like you know they talked about how you're in a new city, and they mentioned something. I, I mean, obviously we just watched the direct, so I haven't had time to like really review all this stuff. But it sounded as if like within the town is related to the story. Which I've kind of always wanted. Like, you know, before in Splatoon, you had your main hub town. And then you kind of, like, went down one path. And then, like, your single player started. Yeah. But this one seems like almost like maybe that main hub town leads to different parts of the single player. Like, different sections of different parts of the world. Maybe you have to return to places and talk to NPCs. So, it, it did kind of imply that to me. That, like, there's, like, these people in the town that are connected to the outskirts of the town. And the outskirts mm-hmm. of the town looks like where the story takes place. So I'm like I'm actually excited to have a single player that like relates to the world around the multiplayer hub. Yeah, I agree. It's not just um, there for the the you know the functionality of it. Yeah, but I mean th- this to me was like the AAA game from the direct for next year from Nintendo. Like, um, oh yeah, I, I agree. This is the their main show. Like, I guess. like obviously Metroid Dread looks great next coming out in a few weeks and Kirby's a big one but like this to me is like this is their game they know is going to sell 5 million plus be a big release they're going to hype it up um, what game, I, what, is this the game you were most excited for the one you at the beginning you said no my most game. excited for was Dying Light 2 <laughs> really no no <laughs> I actually didn't think I, to be honest my most excited for is, is probably Metro, other than Metroid Dread is yeah probably Splatoon 3 or Banana 3 okay yeah mine's Metroid Dread and then uh, Triangle Strategy yeah, totally. And and um I figured that would be your two. I'm trying to I'm just looking at the list here if there's anything else. Um I mean yeah, not not yeah, those are definitely my most excited for games. And yeah, it's just like we're something like Kirby or um Hover Warriors and those types of games, they're like, Oh, they don't look amazing, like they're kind of have the last gen of Switch effect. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. last generation graphics. I don't get that feeling from Splatoon. It feels like it's like made by like premier Nintendo in-house talent you know yeah um so yeah i mean not much to talk about when do you think that one's going to come out uh splatoon 3 yeah um i don't know may june that that's what i was thinking like maybe even later like june july like a summer you know, I, I still that that leak picture it still is looks like it could be in order so I, I still believe that breath of the wild could be you know in the first half of the year like month six definitely definitely not uh, <laughs> there's definitely no way especially if they had shown breath of the wild 2 today and they gave it a name and and reaffirmed the 2022 date i would have believed you but i really think it's going to be like the we're going to see it at next e3 it's going to have the same blow the first one did name reveal big hands-on and then they'll have like their six to nine month promo of it releasing in november or march like that'll be the exact yeah. trajectory i actually I, i'm going to stand by my original trajectory I think that um, Zelda is going to come out in March 2023 along with the Switch Pro. Okay. I think that next year will be like a Donkey Kong or something. Uh, the rumored Donkey Kong from Tokyo EAD. But uh, anyways, let's talk about this last game they showed, which was Bayonetta 3. Uh, yep. You're not really a big Bayonetta fan, are you? I, I, I mean, I played 2 and uh, and 1. I played 1, then 2, actually. Did you beat 2? I, like I did, but the pro- I mean, I still really liked 2. But I played it right after playing one. I should have played two first, like you suggested. But I played one and then two immediately after, and I just 
I was running, I was getting fatigued of Bayonetta by the time I was getting to the end. I still enjoy Bayonetta 2 a lot. It's a really great it's, game. It's one of my favorite games ever. Uh, and I, I, I know it is. I, I double dipped on Switch and I still go back and I beat it on Switch, but I'll still go back and like play the odd level here and there because I just find like that some of the levels in that game are such a rush. I just love it. Yeah, I mean, I, I liked it. I give it an 8. Like, I, I don't... It's oh, I'd give it, a, like, a 9.5. I, I, I'll um, be honest. I like Devil May Cry 5 more than I liked De- uh, Bayonetta 2. Wow. Wow. Um, it just d- different, d- feels different to me, and I, it feels to me, it feels better. It's tighter. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, but, I mean, Bayonetta is wilder. It's wilder yeah. scenarios. Like, you're literally, like, you know, f- surfing on At a... At times, Devil May Cry has those kind of moments, too. Does it, though? I mean, you're right. Bayonetta does... Platinum always kind of amps it up to 11. But yeah. uh, again, yeah. I, I, so it's not a bad game. So this trailer, I mean, it looks like it's going to come out next year. I got to say, like, the graphics looked... This not... game is not... I'll be honest. I was extremely underwhelmed. Let me go first. I okay, was under, okay. I was underwhelmed by this. Yep. You know, I probably will still get it day one. I'll probably still enjoy it as much as the other Bayonetta, Bayonettas. But it really... It, it looks already outdated it, it looks a little you know unpolished it looks a little uninteresting bland like it just doesn't it doesn't it didn't really excite me as much as i thought it was going to so it, it you know I, i'd give it right now a seven like uh, at least the trailer to me was a seven it, it it's there it's good it just didn't hype me the way other games did yeah i mean it was an interesting look at the game because it looked like they kind of just showed one scenario and one fight scene it wasn't the typical bayonetta trailer that shows us like all variety of craziness Mm -hmm. um yeah the graphics didn't look too amazing i mean during the fights who cares like to me i kind of expected it to be graphically underwhelming because i expect it to be uh 60 frames a second yeah uh and i think it probably will be i i think they at least they introduced some new mechanics with like the um the The summons the summoning and i feel like this is kind of a, a takeaway from scalebound yeah, I saw that too. Yeah, I thought where that too. it's like they are tr- Platinum Games has been trying this kind of like summoning, but with the same level of action. And it seems like they may have finally got it. And there was a moment where like you summoned a spider that was crawling all over the buildings. Uh, yeah, so and then... it looks like there you have three summons in the bottom corner of the like I, I, when I was looking at the hub or the the HUD, there's three different summons in the bottom corner. So I think you can kind of pick between the three in the middle of battle. Yeah. Um, which I mean, I actually think that's really cool. My my biggest fear was it was just going to look like Bayonetta two with more levels. So I'm glad that they're introducing some new, like really really new mechanics. Mm-hmm. And there was that bit at the end when you were like playing as the dragon, like flowing flowing along falling buildings and stuff. So it yeah, I mean, that was cool. It looks cool. I guess it, it was just like to be honest, it was really just like that opening bit of the trailer, like that cutscene that looked really bad to me. Um, and the fact that most of the fight scenes seem to take place in that exact same place. Like, if they had mm. just shown variety, like, kicking here, punching here, new level, new level, new level, it would have been probably more exciting. But, um, I don't know. I, it's Yeah, to me, it was a little bit underwhelming, but still excited for it. I'm glad it's coming, right? Yeah. Yeah. But I, I, I do think that, like, the games we're seeing here, and maybe we'll get, you know, the DK unveiling at E3 and a couple more small games. I think we are seeing, like, the end of the switches the non-switch pro games if that makes any sense like at least i hope um my hope is that like by the time we get the next major slate of switch games like the metroid prime 4 and the next mario and things like mario kart 9 those will be ready for switch pro whether or not they're playable on switch and switch pro like i i feel like these are this is the last big run of switch games before the pro comes out what do you think I mean, that's if the pro comes out. I don't know. I'm still, I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm skeptical. I, I think I mean, there's, a, I think there's plenty of Switch games still in the pipeline. Yeah, I, I just think as far as graphics go, like, especially today when it came to uh, Bayonetta three, and when it came to Kirby in the Forgotten Land, I, I am starting to feel that like it's near the end of the generation feeling that I sometimes get. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and then you kind of start to like not care about the releases as much because you're just like nothing's like pushing in any envelopes yeah so i'm getting a little bit of that feeling i feel like bayonetta 3 is being hampered by the hardware i mean it shouldn't be though i mean the system's only been out for four and a half years well that's usually the that's typically near the end of a life cycle though no life cycles are like seven years sort of now but they haven't always been 
No, they almost have always been. It's sort of now that now it's they they have these kind of half cycles of these these middle steps. Well, no, you got to think like uh, you know, PS2 came out in 2001 and then PS3 came out in 2006. So our life cycles have gotten longer starting from the PS3 generation. But I don't know. I guess I guess it's just because with the Switch, it's like you also have to think of it like a handheld. Like the like um the DS only lasted 5 or 6 years too. So I guess to me we are kind of getting to that near the end of what the switch is going to be is in terms of impressive visuals. So I don't know. Yeah, that, I that's mean, just, just, I guess... just, to, just to, to fix you, the, the distance for the PS two to the PS three is six and a half years. 2001 to 2006, March, 2000 to November, two, March, 2000 in Japan. It, it's still in November, November. What are we arguing? What are we arguing here? The, I'm just, it, it, I just, it's I'm out, just it's if out. you're gonna come at me being like, oh, it's six and a half years, it's like, well, not really, because the PS2 came out in, in Europe and and North America much later than Japan. So okay, well, it, semantics. Okay. I guess I guess all I'm saying is, um, I, I'm starting to feel that like, kind, you know, everyone always. I, every, I know what every you're switch, saying. Every Switch thread is like, oh, when's the Switch Pro coming out? And I'm like, Bayonetta three is the biggest feeling I've had so far about that. I, I, I totally agree. I know what you're saying. I'm not trying to, you know, play devil's advocate. I, I agree with you. I, I they're they need to start, you know, they need a better graphics because I think they're reaching that limit of what they can do and they want to do more and I think they need to get that out. Yeah, I, I still do have faith though that Bayonetta three is going to look great when it comes out. It seems like graphics seem to be something that in the later stage get better with Nintendo games. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, even Metroid Dread, someone's done a comparison, and it, and it actually looks better now than it did at E3. So, uh, I have a lot of hope for Bayonetta 3. Um, so, it's basically Platinum Games' premier series. So, but, uh, I don't know. So, overall, you are uh, you said you're an 8, right? 8, 8.5? Yeah, yeah. I mean, 8.5 would be the top, top end. Yeah, I think I'm probably the same. 8 to 8.5. I mean, overall, though, is like, I think it's a very, very strong direct. Like they had tons of stuff from different third parties. They had shadow drops. They had big Nintendo reveals. Like it's no, I, I agree. It was a good, good stuff. Yeah. Um, I mean, I just think back to the days of like the Wii U and the 3DS when like you'd most directs would be disappointing. <laughs> like this, yeah, <laughs> this direct during the Wii U era would have been a ten out of ten. Totally. I mean, like, we just got a new Kirby announced. We got Bayonetta three with a release window. Yeah, or and by the way, a three three D Kirby, which is like rev- revelatory to yeah. people. We got a Metroid that's coming out. Uh, you know, there's a lot of pretty sick stuff in this direct. Yeah, totally. Um, so, yeah, I think pretty good. Um, so yeah, overall, I'm pretty happy about all of it. Yeah, it was a pretty good direct. Yeah, me too. Yep. Um, okay, so you, should we just quickly go over some other news? Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> what, there, I was like, there are... Really? Okay, so the cup, just two headlines here. One is uh, the Disney collection got announced for all systems, including Switch, which now it's the same as the Lion King Aladdin collection of before, but now they've included Jungle Book and they've included the Super Nintendo Aladdin. Awesome. Comes out November 9th. To me, day one. Awesome. Yeah, I, I, the reason I held off before was that I did, didn't have the Super Nintendo Aladdin. But it's a lower price release, and also if you did buy the uh, old Disney collection, you can now just DLC this all these updates. So they're like really cool. smart about it. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm super stoked about that. So I'm definitely gonna grab that. Awesome headline too. Uh, are you gonna get it though? Probably not. I'll okay, so not awesome for you. Okay. I had them on the SNES Mini. No, you, oh, because you uh, admitting to stealing them on their podcast. I see. Uh, <laughs> Um, but at least you don't the, think you've admitted to doing something like that in the podcast? Oh my god! At least these will be on a handheld, though. Um, yeah, true. But I mean, okay. I, I grew up with uh, Lion King, like Super Nintendo Lion King and Aladdin. Like those are very classic games for me. Yeah, I remember playing them too as a kid. Uh, the next headline is uh, Emily Rogers has hinted on Twitter that she's heard that Nintendo is remaking just Metroid Prime One for Metroid's twenty Pro, Metroid Prime's twentieth anniversary to be released next November. Oh, interesting. Um, what do you think? Like, some people I, are disappointed because they expected the trilogy. I mean, I think it's believable. I, I think, I, I think it'll honestly probably all three will happen. They're just doing one at a time. Oh, really? I, I don't know about that. I can see them just remaking one and then never doing the other two. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, she, I mean, I think it depends honestly on the sales of 
Metroid Dread and Metroid Prime 4 if that's the next one that comes out before the remake. It depends on how, how well they sell. To be honest, I, I don't know if I believe this one at all. Like, I, I expected a Metroid Prime trilogy that was, like, the same level of Mario Galaxy being updated for Switch. Like, you know, it's HD now and that's it. I didn't really expect them to go and fully remake Metroid Prime 1, you know? Like, it's a 20-year-old game. It's not that crazy to Yeah, and I mean, I'm Metroid Prime's my favorite game ever, so I'm obviously stoked about that, especially from the ground-up remake. I just can't see Nintendo, like, you know, a year or two ago, sitting there and thinking, like, hey, Metroid, one of our least popular franchises, we're making Dread, we're making Prime 4, let's make Prime 1 Remake. It just seems like a lot of a lot of Metroid, like, yeah. compared to what they're used to. It, to me, it's usually like they have one or maybe two Metroids being in the pipe at once, and when those are done and released, they'll go and make more. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't imagine them having three in the works, but who knows. Um, but still, I don't know. Interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, do you want to do what have we been playing or no? I think a, so. Don't we, don't we always do it? Yeah, I just mean... We, I mean, I haven't been playing longer. anything. I've been playing the same thing as always. I've been playing Diablo 2, the mod. So that's really all I've been playing. So I, I'm still been playing Psychonauts 2. I'm very close to the end. Loving it. But uh, I also picked up Cruisin' for Switch. Mm-hmm. Only played a little bit, but it's it's awesome. It's really awesome. Oh, it's, it's awesome. Yeah. Oh, actually, you know what? I was playing uh, on the bus a couple days ago. I was playing Wargroove. I started playing Wargroove. It's oh, really how, good. how is that? It's really, really good. It, it, it is truly Advanced or advanced Wars, but with like a Fire Emblem, like or like a, sorry, a medieval fantasy theme. So does that mean you're not going to get... Does it kind of take away the, your excitement for Advanced Wars or... Totally. Like, Advance Wars, I again, I played the either the DS one or the Game Boy Advance one. I can't remember. I think um, we both played the Game Boy Advance one because I borrowed it from you. Okay, yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, I would play them again, but I just bought this for half the price, and apparently it's way more content. And right now it's great, and it's scratching that itch. So I don't, I don't really have a need anytime soon to play Advance Wars. True. I mean, I almost think that the no-show of Advance Wars might be a sign that it got delayed. I don't know. I mean, it's the only game that doesn't have a box art from their E3 lineup, and it was a complete no-show today. And, I mean, hell, they showed Dying Light 2, which is coming out in February, and it's a cloud game. You'd think they'd, yeah. they'd show a net. They'd at least just, in this sizzle reel, show Advance Wars the December 3rd release date. So part of me thinks either... I mean, I, I actually really have a very a lot of doubts it's going to come out this year. It might be like a February game now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. Uh, I really don't know, but uh, yeah, um, it's a tough, tough call to make. Yeah, uh, but I guess I don't know. That kind of that's kind of it for this week, isn't it, Derek? Yeah, I think two hours on a single direct is, is enough for this week. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, if you're still listening to us out there, make sure you leave a comment, and you'd be our first comment. So. <laughs> still, you know, 20 episodes later, you'd be our first comment. Just be our first comment. Well, we used to have we had comments when we did this way back in the day when we like yeah. talked about like Wii U. But since the redux of this, we've had no comments that are not spam for porn sites. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I guess uh, yeah. Thanks for joining us this week, and thanks for chatting, Derek. Yeah, thanks for chatting. Uh, this is the Nintendo Bros Podcast signing out. See you later.